Why am I nervous? Because we're about to tell, <laughs> we're about to tell scary stories in a scary place. See, I don't know if I'm more nervous about the scary place thing or that fact that you told me that I have to read a story. Oh, I'm yeah. really bad at public reading. You'll <laughs> it be scares okay. me. I trip over words. I don't pronounce them all right. That's okay. That's what editing is for. You know, I did do line reading though with a an actor with the actor. Oh, yeah. The, I, I was for so, a new Netflix show. Uh, it was an addition, mm. but actually, it's so funny. So yesterday, I watched his most recent Netflix show, mm. which is Partner Track. Have you guys heard of it? Oh, you're you're really dropping them like that, huh? <laughs> well, I'm actually kind of, I want to know, like, if anyone else has watched this, have you guys seen it yet? I saw the previews. It's on my list to watch. Yeah, so um, he is completely my type in the show. <laughs> and I actually want to know if our THT friends. In the show. Yeah, can guess, <laughs> can guess which one he is. Okay. Based off if they think they know my type, because his the character he plays is it's yeah okay spot on <laughs> okay yeah. so fam if you watch the show comment on the youtube spot and on see if you can uh take a guess yep. who lauren's chatting with i'm really excited to see if they can guess chatting it. chatting with <laughs> just I like chatting this. i like this so you've noticed if you're watching on youtube our costumes by now everyone say their costumes it's halloween week i'm a, a unicorn but i look like a beanie baby no, it's really cute. You have by far the cutest one. I like yours a lot. Well, mm. Justin's is pretty cool. Not, I wouldn't say cute, but it's cool, you know? Cute? What do you mean? This is hot. Yeah, Can you exactly. imagine if I was an astronaut? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> He's turned on about the idea of himself being an astronaut. That's good. I, that's, that's good self-love. It's yeah. my alternate personality, but also like my personality because it will happen. I will wear a suit like this at someday. So. After you uh, make a hit song for Dua Lipa, you're going straight to space. Yeah, yes. he actually would. Yeah. Yeah, if Justin had the money, he'd be on the next spaceship with Jeff Bezos. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just going to apply to the, the Mars missions. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so Lauren's a unicorn, Justin's an astronaut, and my name is Tigger. <laughs> wow, you practiced that. I, that's something I've always been <laughs> no, able to do. No, she just does that. <laughs> it does. just happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you are. It used to be better what, when what, I was in high school. What sound do you think a unicorn would, would make? A horse <laughs> sound. Okay. Just like maybe with sparkles. It's so funny how unicorns like are this mystical character. They, they're literally a horse with a horn. They're definitely real. Or were in the past, I mean. I like that. Because think about those little seals with the horns. Hmm. Narwhals. Think about oh. all the crazy stuff that's in the ocean. Yeah. And did you know that whales and cows appa apparently are like relatives? What the fuck? Yeah. Well, everything is technically a relative on some mm. level, but 99% hmm. hmm. of all species that have ever existed are extinct. That's really wow. sad. So if you think of the diversity of life that we know on Earth now, think about all that was before. And there was much, much, much before dinosaurs where there's not even fossils or anything because it's just too old. So we really don't know That's what could crazy. have been. How did they do these? Um, like, how did they come up with these theories? That all It's just reality. I mean, if you think about we can estimate with high accuracy when life began on Earth because of the changes in atmosphere and you can see all this in the different different layers of rock and such but so cool. the crazy thing is that leads even to the the idea that there could have been past intelligent civilizations on earth and it's just been so long since that it's all been buried and dis like just returned to earth sediment mm. Uh, and on that note, tune in to the next Spotify Live where Justin <laughs> talks layers of the earth and past species. Uh, we just did our, dope, though. Yeah, we just did our space episode on Spotify Live. Oh, wow. So Justin got a whole hour and a half to talk about space and thriving. crushed it. It was a good time. I'm so, just a tangent guy now. Yeah. <laughs> Even in sessions now, I start to just talk to someone and I'll, we'll go down a crazy rabbit hole. And or a black hole. Yeah, 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 yeah. wormhole. <laughs> um, and 
all of a sudden we'll all be sitting there and I'll be like, okay, I'm sorry, I'll stop talking because I get everyone so off track. That's great. Which we were good info. Train is rolling on this one. So we are in costumes coming at you with a spooky episode that is completely made up of listener write ins. And we are recording at the Mission Inn in Riverside, California, which is one of the top three haunted places in California. And it is so beautiful, you guys. (laughs) It's insane. I I kept being like, nowhere this beautiful could be that haunted. Yeah, you're like, there's so many happy things that happen here. How's it haunted? Yeah, there's weddings and stuff. But I will say the rooms are so creepy. Like all of the architecture, (laughs) it really is like terrifying. But the the outdoor areas are just, it all all is beautiful, honestly. Yeah. It's all in your head. I know, we'll include a couple of videos. (laughs) Um, at the end of this YouTube video of just like the hotel and areas we were exploring. I mean, we went through every corridor. We're going to do a little bit more exploring after we record this. So maybe I'll be patching in audio that like, oh my God, we saw a ghost. But we went into like the bowels of the basement where the ballroom is. We were pulling doors, trying to get in to spots. (laughs) Um, And we haven't seen anything yet, but there definitely is a vibe here where it just feels maybe a little eerie because there's a oh, big yeah. chapel on the property and it's just like that gothic mm-hmm. renaissance style. It's very old, old school. And it and like I was saying when we got into the room, it smells like a haunted house. It does <laughs> smell like It smells old. like a haunted movie. Yeah. I mean, so the place... <laughs> just like a, little, a haunted movie. <laughs> like if you, if you watch a haunted movie and then you imagine that it smells like something, like what's that one uh, really famous one, the like red rum one? I don't know. What? With Jack Nicholson? How to Kill a Mockingbird? What? No. (laughs) Uh, Secret Window? No. It's the elevator one with the twins and the blood. The Shining? Yes. Yeah. I never watched it. I never saw it either. But I have seen parts of it because people forced me to try to watch it. Mm. But this place looks how that place looks like it would smell and smells. Okay, <laughs> okay, this isn't working. It uh, smells old in here. It smells we get it. Yeah, Which okay. it is old. The original hotel, which was called a boarding house back then, uh, the Glenwood Cottage was built in 1876. And then the owner, who at that time was Christopher Columbus Miller, I know, unfortunate name, sold it to his son in February 1880. And Frank Augustus Miller was the son who purchased it and turned it into a full service hotel in the early 1900s. And I mean, there's been super famous people that have stayed here, a lot of past presidents. Um, So the place is a vibe and a lot of people report seeing, hearing all sorts of things. Smelling. (laughs) Okay, sorry, I'm done. (laughs) Justin does not like the smelling haunted comment. I'm just still trying to decipher. I'm still trying to figure <laughs> that confused. one out. He's confused. He's confused. But mm. let's get into these uh, these listener write-ins, all okay. about paranormal experiences. Let's do it. Let's dive in. Are we ready? Mm-hmm. Born ready. I don't know if I'm ready. Fuck. Okay, so this first one, I'll start off by saying that this has been happening over the course of my life, starting at the age of 17, which was by far the scariest thing to happen in my life. I'm currently a 29-year-old female. When I was 17, I was living with my boyfriend and his family. They were unaware of our relationship because of a situation I was in at my home, and so they took me in. They didn't have a room open for me, so I slept on their couch. They had this huge clock on the wall at the end of the couch, and the damn thing would tick so loudly. I have insomnia, so this drove me nuts. But one night, I was laying down, and both hands on the clock dropped to six, and all of the toys in the living room started going off. Shut the fuck up. Do you hear that? (laughs) All of a sudden, the clock starts ringing here. It is 7.01. That is terrifying, though. The timing of it, though. It's that one of those, was good timing. It's like a grand clock, too. And it's, it's, I don't know if you guys can pick it up. It's the bells. We can hear it from outside. That's like a creepy clock that, sound. That is really creepy. Wow. Um, that was just cool. That was, that's pretty cool. Good yeah, timing. Was, good yeah. timing. Good timing story, Morgan. Clock. Ooh. Love it. Wow. Um. So 
I was laying down and both hands on the clock dropped to six and all the toys in the living room started going off. I was so scared. I put the blanket over my head and after a few minutes, I was silent again, except for the damn ticking. I chopped it up to maybe I fell asleep and dreamt it all. Fast forward about three months. I'm still living in this house, but now they have moved me into a bedroom in the back of the house. My boyfriend and I had kept our secret and he would come in at 3 a.m. almost every night. So I thought nothing of it when I woke up to someone standing above my bed. When I looked at him, he was wearing all black and his eyes, dot, dot, dot. I can't even begin to describe what I was seeing. It wouldn't do him justice, but I could feel the hatred radiating from him. His image is burned in my memory. He turned on my light and he was gone. Oh, I started to try and reason out what happened and made my way to my boyfriend's room and he was snoring in bed. I began to realize the true nature of what happened and I started to hyperventilate in the corner of his room and shaking profusely. His mom and stepdad ran into the room to find out what was going on, and I explained it all. His stepdad turned white and told me he had seen the same person the night before outside on the front lawn, but maybe thought it was a kid in the neighborhood. What the fuck? Fast forward a couple years later. I moved into an apartment with my oldest child's father, pregnant with her at the time, and I was Skyping with my friend in my bedroom, my back to the door, having a random conversation, and then she stops mid-sentence and asks me who's with me. I'm, of course, confused as hell because I was home alone. I turned around to see no one, of course, but then she said he was standing behind my door, and I looked, but no one was there. I then looked in my little camera box, and sure as hell, there he was, the same man that I had seen in that house two years prior. New house, new city, same man. What? I just got full body chills. Camera box? Um, I'm not sure what it means. We can ask maybe someone. Like she reviewed the like recording or it's just like. I'm not sure. Or like. I don't know what a camera box is. I'm not sure. Hmm. Seven years later, I'm laying in my bed. New apartment, new city. Waiting for my fiance to get out of the shower. This house seemed good enough. Never seen anything here or heard anything other than my neighbors fighting. No spirits. I was calm and waiting when all of a sudden I was flipped over to the foot of my bed, staring at the bathroom door. Hands. I felt big hands across my legs, holding them down, not letting me move. I felt them again across my chest, making it hard to breathe. And when I opened my mouth to scream, nothing came out. Like I had a hand over my mouth. Everything started to fade into a black tunnel. Unable to breathe or move, I stared at the door hoping for any relief. The shower turned off and I was released like nothing happened. He tried to kill me. I've always been an open person and have been able to see things that not everyone can see, but not really on command. One thing I can do somewhat easily is see auras, colors, if you will. I've always called it my instincts. I can tell there was like a little fruit fly and it was going in circles and it was the corner of my eye. And I was like, it's a fucking aura. Okay. (laughs) I'm not doing well so far. Just so you guys know, (laughs) this is not, yeah. (laughs) Are you like Justin, you're on phase. You look on phase. I'm chilling. Oh God. Okay. (sighs) Sorry, Morgan. I've always called it my instincts. I can tell based on my instincts, what kind of person you are or how you're feeling. I am an empath. That being said, a month ago, I was having a conversation with a host for a job I was doing in LA. This person is not someone I've ever met before and had no connection to till this day. We were talking about spirituality and what it means to us, and this, quote, man got brought up. I started to tell the story of what happened, and before I could tell her what I saw, she stops me. She said, I know this is going to sound really strange, but I just got an image in my head. I told her to please describe what she saw because I needed to know if the image I just played out in my own head was the same. As soon as I think of him, I always have the same image. What she described was too accurate to understand. How did she know? Had she seen him before? Had she encountered the same being? Why does my skin hurt? Why is my scalp tingling? What is this connection? Had I thrown an image with my own mind? 
How is she seeing him? I had so many questions and didn't know where to start. She knew exactly what his eyes looked like, the sunken black holes that have scarred my dreams and the way she described how she felt, the pure hatred, the disgust. Did the universe put her there to do this with me? What the hell kind of connection was this that allowed images across both our minds? Who the hell is following me? To this day, my youngest child, four-year-old daughter, talks to someone in our home. She has never stated that she was scared, but I know that she's open as well, and it terrifies me that she may encounter the same man that has haunted me my whole adult life. What the fuck? That is insane have you guys heard that type of story before like that's yeah so kind of so my friend laura has a sister named cat and cat has like worked with a spiritualist uh especially in recent years since their dad passed but there's a story that laura told me where cat was really young and their older cousin or someone was like babysitting them and cat was sleeping and the cousin like walked into the room to like check on her sleeping and there was like a dark figure hovering over Kat in, while she was sleeping. Oh my God. And so Kat has like worked with a spiritualist and the spiritualist kind of told her like, you have this man that is attached to you, that has been following you. And so she's worked with this person to try to like create a boundary like in her own mind and like from her energy to like block him out. But it's it's very real. I fully Jeez. believe that this is a thing. Wow. And it's scary because like how do how do these people find you? And do they find you when you're more open to spiritual connections like this? Like Justin, nothing's getting through that. He's just like very unfazed, like doesn't really react to do paranormal. You believe in, do you believe in it though? Because you like it, right? I'm just like, I will get there when I experience it. So I invite the experience 100%. Not, not right here, and not right I've now. And I've done that for years. When Jake and I would live in, lived in New York, mm -hmm. we used to be like, like, come all, come to our apartment. We, we were wanting to experience something. But why? Anything. Just it doesn't to, freak you out? I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm sure on some level it would, but at the same time, it's just, you don't, like you can hear a million stories and, you know, there's people that would never lie to you, but there's also the the fact that the brain is so powerful and like it, your brain can kill you. Your brain can make you believe anything, see anything. And so it's like every time you are seeing right now, your brain is completing some part of the image. Mm -hmm. And so- So interesting. It's, I don't think people are as aware as they think they are most times, just in the sense that Everything you're seeing is just like this, this processing that your brain's doing from what your eyes are taking in. It, it's just, it's very interesting when you get into the the whole mechanics of how you see and perceive and and anal and well, like analyze our, things. Yeah, and like our brain doesn't even allow us to know what we really look like, which but, I think is interesting. But the thing about it though is though, I am very, I'm open in the sense that I know as a species, we are intelligent, but we are so far from knowing all, right? Yeah. We are so yeah, just, absolutely. the the what we know is like, when you think about the ocean, we've explored like a very minute percentage of it. So we don't know what's out there, let alone the great expanse of space. Yeah. So we really are so limited in what we understand, even though we think we know a lot. Yeah. And because of that, I can't say, Oh yeah, no, that stuff's all fake. It's not real. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't, whatever. But you just don't know. No one can say, I mean, sure, there's probably people who fully truly believe it, but there is nothing when you, like there's nothing scientifically proven, I mm -hmm. don't think, if you, that can prove or disprove. And so it's just like, I need to have an experience mm -hmm. to be on that train. Yeah. Okay. I always thought that you were way more like a believer. So it sounds like you're more of a not a believer. I think he's a very s s like skeptic. Skeptic. Okay. He's a skeptic. But I like I can't. But you're open to the like you're yeah. But like you know if Morgan you came and told yeah. me this same story, how do you argue? That? I'm not yeah. going to be like, hmm. Okay. Well, let's go through what could have happened. 
I mean, your mind definitely goes there when you're on my side of it, where you're like, well, you could be in this half asleep thing because I've like had all sorts of types of crazy dreams and you wake up and you try and figure out, okay, did I just experience that or not? And your brain is powerful enough to have these crazy dreams. Yeah. I mean, think when you have a dream, how chaotic and like supernatural. You know the and, difference though. But like, well, what's weirding me out is the fact that there's so many different people that have like, the friend who saw the man yeah. in that call. The person he saw, the, the dad who saw the man on the lawn. Like, I know. there's and so, so many different people that's what's involved. Strange. That is what's strange. And so that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Whereas if I had some experience and I went to Morgan, she's like, no, wait, I saw this too, mm -hmm. like a few days ago. Then I'd be like, yep. oh shit. Yeah. But I'd almost be more fascinated by it and mm -hmm. be like, oh my God, there's this whole realm that like I just got a little dip my toe into and I have no idea about, but it's it's, it's more there. it's more of a fascination where mm -hmm. it's like, oh my God, this is so crazy, yeah. but cool. Yeah. Not like I mean it would be scary too. Yeah. So I don't it's know. Terrifying. I can't speak on it because I'm not yeah. I'm not there. It's it's so scary when something like this happens to you because for me, you you do question yourself after you're like, did that just happen? Like what the hell? But like I was not asleep and it's definitely so different than a dream when it does happen. And if you guys didn't watch like the last spooky episode, I've, I've talked to, about it a few times on the podcast, but I had like a paranormal experience where I heard footsteps like running up and down the hall and like the light switch flicking on and off of like this old um, assisted living place turned Airbnb that I was staying at. And so it it feels surreal because you're like, how is this happening? Like, I know I'm here alone. Like you, you try to rationalize it in your head mm -hmm. and you're like, but there's no, no one's here. Yeah. The doors are locked. I but am this, by myself. I mean, this takes it a level further because if you physically see and interact with something to be touched, yeah. touched, but also yeah. even just to see like yours was through a door and you're mm -hmm. seeing lights and you're hearing things you didn't, actually see right to see oh if i would have saw a that's what figure, i mean that's what i mean i don't know how she was like <sighs> ever okay again like knowing that that like creature whatever it is could like come up at any point if it keeps coming up like throughout her life like i don't know how you i would pff, oh my god well and i told her i said someone has access to the house that's what i said when she called me the next day i said a you just like literally can't stay there anymore but b i was also like I want to come stay there and experience this too. Everything was locked though. Every door had chain links. Every window had a wooden bar in it. Yeah. I mean, there was no You were way. alone, right? Mm -hmm. Holy shit. How did what? you go back to sleep? Put a blanket over my head. I laid there for quite some time after. Was your heart just racing? Yeah. I felt like I was having a panic attack. Yeah. I, my I heart's like, racing the fuck? this like entire past yeah. few hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. <laughs> I think the craziest thing about this, and we've said this quite a few times, and I think it's kind of common knowledge that like little kids too are more perceptive to things. They see spirits more than we do as adults. And so the fact that her daughter, the four-year-old is talking to someone in the house. But the fact yeah, that that four-year-old is not afraid though, that's because naive, kids usually, naivety, naiveness. Kids like, usually aren't afraid though. Cause no. they don't know that to be a scary thing. Yeah. They haven't seen horror films. They haven't, heard all these crazy stories. Uh, They're more just like, oh, hi, like they yeah. don't know. They have but no you clue. feel like, I mean, you can feel like if she really felt that hatred, if it was the same person, maybe it's not, maybe she, cause she said she just thinks that her daughter's open like she is. Yeah. So maybe it's a different like energy, like source. Maybe it's presenting different to the child to try to gain the child's trust. Before, oh, that's so creepy. Before it flips. I mean, do you think this has been happening ever since there was slightly intelligent beings such as like, when there was cavemen, I'm saying when there was a distinctive human-like species, right? Or do you think this has occurred throughout all life? Do you think there's, when life is all there's just- There's always been spirits? When there was always just like little bacteria. Do you think the bacteria like some turned into ghosts and then some bacteria would be like, oh, but I guess they're not smart enough to realize. No. So I guess if, it, if you are an aware uh, life form. Well, and I'm not sure about like cavemen and what they believe in, but what I about know like dogs, dogs see these stuff, these things, the right? Cause then they start see... barking or yeah. they like sometimes June in the studio, Austin's dog will just all of a sudden, if you throw the ball into this one corner, she'll grab the ball and then she'll look up 
kind of up like this and she'll just stare for like 10 seconds straight. Oh my God. Yeah, there's something there. And in in the studio one day, this girl was freaking out because she's like, oh my God, did you see what she just did? And we're like, yeah, she kind of just does that. And I threw it over there again and she grabbed the ball and like looked up and just stared. There's something there. Let's get a spiritualist in there. I'm down. I mean, if there was going to be spirits, they would have been in the old studio. Well, we never sensed a thing. Just wrote great songs. <laughs> yeah, I. Anyway, I'm sorry. I know. Tangent. I know. We, <laughs> but um, it's relevant. It is, and so what I was going to say though, too, like I'm not. I don't know if you kind of meant it like this, but like if other, like forms of human civilizations had spirits or things like that. But I know within Native American or Indigenous people, their culture, there's a lot of. Um, legends about spirits and you know skinwalkers is a conversation and so we're actually on an upcoming spotify live episode we're actually going to have a native creator come on and talk with us about skinwalkers which is kind of like a person that can like change forms and they can also like kind of mold into animals i believe but don't quote me because we will have a true Native American yeah. creator come on and like talk about this with us. But I think a lot of other cultures do have like the belief of spirits and ghosts and things like that. I just I'm, meant I'm back far. before they could communicate it or write it down. We're going to have to look up caveman because that's I, what I'm saying. I could see it. I honestly could see it. Like, but they would experience it and they wouldn't have a way to pass it down necessarily or cave drawings. But maybe we just think there are other people yeah, on the wall. True. There's so many cave drawings. I'm like, picturing a caveman just like draw like a ghost. ghost. Like the emoji. <laughs> the emoji. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was envisioning too. Uh, okay, moving along. The cave is haunted. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So this one starts off. My dad's house used to be a troubled girl's home. When we moved in, we had one of the neighbors tell us that there were rumors about the people running the home, locking the girls in the basement when they would misbehave. <sighs> We found claw marks in the brick in the basement. At night, you would hear footsteps coming up and down the stairs, but there was no one there. Little did I know it would get much worse once I lived there alone. This is when the footsteps started coming all the way up the stairs and into my bedroom. One night when my boyfriend and I were watching a movie, plain as day, we heard footsteps come up the stairs and into my bedroom. Then we heard, quote, want to play a game? in a little girl's voice. What the fuck? We left the house at that time. After this, items started getting moved around the house. My wallet ended up outside when it was in my purse by the front door. Items in the kitchen would disappear for a day or two and return to their exact location, etc. When I started dating my now fiancé, I told him about the house before he stayed the night. He thought I was crazy. I can be pretty dramatic and exaggerate things, so it wasn't all his fault. One night, I was taking a shower, and he was in my bedroom, when it sounded like a man was having a conversation and then coming up the stairs. My fiancé ran into the bathroom with a baseball bat and locked the door, then pulls the shower curtain open, and the look of fear in his eyes is something I have never seen before. After this occurrence, a dark figure would appear around the house. I woke up several times to it standing over the side of my bed. My fiancé goes to the same college I graduated from and had one of my old professors who is obsessed with ghost hunting. She literally gave us all extra credit to come to a ghost walk through downtown. He tells her about the situation at the house and she asks him for the address to Google it. All I was told is that the lights in her office flickered. My fiancé went to leave campus to head home and gets about five minutes from campus when his car dies on him. There were no lights coming on and there was nothing detected by the mechanic by a mechanical scan. When he gets back to the house and tells me the lights at the house started to flicker, keep in mind this house never lost power. I'm talking the whole neighborhood would be out of power, and this house would still have power. He stopped telling me what happened, and the flickering stopped. My brother and dad live there now and haven't had any of the issues I had when I lived there alone. I thought it was over, but last month, I woke up like I did many times at that house to a dark figure standing over my side of the bed. I grabbed the dog, rolled over, and pulled the covers over our heads. I'm not white enough to check the figure out. I think. What does she mean I'm not white enough? Like, I think, like, I'm not sure. Like, a white person would be 
silly enough to check out what the ghost is doing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, not this white girl. <laughs> um, why does this always, I get the footsteps happened like necessarily not at night, but why are so many of these occurrences like, oh, I woke up in the middle of the night to this. It was like by my bed or hovering above me. Why, why is it always at night? Do you, I wonder if it's like, okay, so let's, in the version of let's say this is completely accurate. I know that like you're very skeptical, but maybe that's the most vulnerable time because it is. Yeah. Because you are, your guard is down. You're completely in a dream state. Like the ghosts feel that they can get close to you because of the fact that you don't have all these other things going on in your brain. And like, you're, you know what I mean? Like you're, but it's always when you're, that's also when your mind is the least clear, right? That's when we cannot necessarily discern between what's a dream and what's reality. And you, sometimes you mm -hmm. wake up and you're afraid and you have to literally convince yourself that it was a dream, right? Yeah. Because dreams can be so ultra real realistic. So are there any of these stories that we're going to encounter that are like, Yep, middle of the day, walk downstairs and there was this figure in my kitchen. I'm not sure, but you, you, uh, I'm not sure. You're going to have to do some research on this. I had this one psycho ass dream one night and I was at Morgan's mm -hmm. and you know how right out of the bedroom, right to the right is the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I remember kind of like most nights, I'd probably say every night I get up to like pee in the middle of the night. Yeah. So I'm used to that I do path. too. It's so annoying. Yeah, but like, you know, when you wake up in the middle of the night, you do not need a light on. You can see because your eyes are adjusted. At least for me, I get up and I know exactly Fair where enough. I'm going. Yeah. And I take that right and I go, I don't turn a light on the whole time because mm -hmm. that's just, it's too bright and it's going to wake you up. Yeah. And I just remember, yeah, true. I was either washing my hands or something and I turned and this, the shower curtain opens like this and there's this, huge ass dude kind of like game of thrones vibes like not the one mountain. of the giants but like the mountain or the dog well uh, just a yeah and he's like this bald guy got sh shirt and pants on whatever and just the eyes are just pure white and just starts walking towards me out he steps out of the tub and starts walking towards me and i like fall back into the hallway i remember this so clearly it's crazy and then i wake up just in your bed but if I had been, you know, sort of in that like half dream, half not, like I still had a, like I woke up and then realized, oh my God, it was just a bad dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I could have easily associated like, oh my God, you don't know what happened to me last night. So yeah. I'm just like. You're I, being I a skeptic. We get I'm it. I'm just. That's just from my reference point. I think I think there's a lot to be said about in your sleep. You are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You're also maybe easier for them to tap into for energy yeah. because I do think like a lot of down. these. Yeah. And I, I have seen like a lot of people say that like in order to connect, these spirits do need energy and they often borrow from us or wow. tap into us. So if you're closed off and you're not receptive to spirits, mm -hmm. you're not allowing them to tap your energy. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's something about sleep. You're vulnerable. You're at ease. Mm -hmm. You're not, there's no guard up. And yeah. I think it is very easy for them to approach. Mm -hmm. But you're saying if you're not open to it, it still won't happen when you're asleep. I think there is something to be said about your willingness to be open and whether you believe or not. So then once you have an experience, you're just automatically open forever because you can never refute it. Like this girl had Maybe. Not. So once you see it and you're like, oh, fuck, I never want to see that again. You can't just close your that off because you're already, you've already seen it. So you're, you're yeah. believing. Well, and it could be too where it's almost like muscle memory where like once that you have been connected or like once that spirit has shown themselves to you or sucked your energy or whatever the fuck it is, like maybe they have an easier time reaching you again. Cause they feel like you're a target now. Like yeah. they're like, okay, this is someone that I have been able to get through to. So yeah, I'm going to continue to try. Exactly. I got this bitch on speed dial. <laughs> See, but then I want to know what it's like to be a spirit. I want to know why you feel the need to do that. And also I want to know if you're attached to a place or if, well, like place that, I just, or building yeah. See, like that's you were talking the problem. about earlier. As soon as I would be into it, I'd be like, oh my God, okay, now I need to know everything about it. Like why? What so Well, maybe what? we start doing a couple of paranormal adventures and like 
getting you an opportunity to have an actual experience. But then when I have the experience, I'll be frustrated because I won't be able to understand that whole side of it. And all I want to do- But you might believe it more, which I think is like the first step. Yeah. And there's people that do research this extensively. So, And that's the hard part about this is that it's like, like, okay, Justin obviously has a very scientific mind. So- it's you can't do these hardcore studies and because the afterlife we don't it's not tangible yeah you know so it's we can't we really don't know like we See, don't you know, know a lot i'm also not a i'm i'm not a not believer in the sense that i truly 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 hope there is something more right. than what we're experiencing now You're i just really not convinced do yet. because who would not want that who would not want things to continue I want to see how far humans make it technologically. I want to see how far we get into space. I hope that in the afterlife, you can go and actually understand there's other life forms out there and you can actually see what they're doing and how advanced they are. Like I would be, I would be like <laughs> happier than I've ever been ever. If that were your thing, <laughs> you know, if like I could go see all that and experience because those are such burning big questions. Well, let's not have you find out too soon, but maybe someday. Not, I'm not saying I want to die. I'm just no, saying I, know. I would be so excited to learn all of that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, and yeah, it is really interesting because so one of the questions I asked them when we were going through the hallways is, do you think that ghosts attach to a particular building? Like, are they within the walls because there's so much energy and exchange of you know memories that live within these these the structure that's, you know, over a hundred years old Mm -hmm. or like, is it the land? Could you like knock this all the way down? And if you got rid of every ounce of this, like, would they still be attached to the land? So I don't know. Yeah. Or, see, and I, so I get so curious. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then hearing this ghost, cause I've always thought it was just like, it was stored memory. Like, like there's so much energy here that it's just like, you know, that's what I've, I've, what I've thought about it. But hearing that this girl has somebody like following her to a new location, that blows my mind. Yeah. Both, both of these people. Yeah. The both footsteps of these thing though. Two. I would react the same goddamn way. What? It, you're in your house and you're someone coming up the stairs. Mm-hmm. I had one experience like that when I was a kid. One. Mm-hmm. But I heard, I was at home alone in the living room. And I heard these footsteps and I swear I heard it coming up from the basement. But that's what my mind associated it with because I'm like, oh, I'm home alone. But really it was my parents coming up the stairs from the garage to come into the house. And then the door opened to come in the house. And it was just them the whole time. But I almost had that freak out where I'm like, holy fucking hell, someone's in the damn house and they're coming upstairs. So I was ready to book it out the goddamn front door. But- I, I know that instant fear, like you hear footsteps yeah. and especially you hear some conversation. Oh my God. It's terrifying. I, I don't know if I've told you guys this, but this was one of the scarier times when I was young. Like I was home alone a decent amount. And one of the times that I was home alone, I heard crazy gunshots. And I was like, I'm being under attack. I'm going to die. I like ran upstairs. I ran into my closet, went into the very corner of my closet. I put clothes all over me. Like my heart's beating. The the noises are louder and louder. And then I was like, oh my God, it's July 1st. People are letting off fireworks. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, oh fuck my, my life. Uh, That's funny. Early fireworks. That is funny. Yeah. I'm under attack. Yeah. Like it was one of the scariest moments and it was like, I was like, I'm a fucking idiot. I was like seven. I don't know. I was pretty young. That's crazy. Well, you're getting your wish with the next story we have because it does happen. Daytime. In the daytime or at least not when they're sleeping and multiple people witness it. Perfect. So around eight or nine years ago, my little brother had this Buzz Lightyear doll that no one thought anything of. That was... Until the day the doll turned on and so clearly spoke my mother's name. Ooh. I like that. At the time this happened, I was around age 10 and my brother was 7. Being 10 and a doll saying my mother's name scared the living daylights out of me. And to be honest, it still would now. Anyways, one night when my two eldest sisters, one of their friends, my mother, and I were in the living room talking, my little brother came down the stairs to ask if my mother could fix his Buzz Lightyear doll, as he had no batteries in him. Obviously, my mother said yes and took the doll into her hands and went along pressing buttons to try to find out where to put the batteries. And that's when she pressed a button 
And the doll said, quote, Hello, Rita. The air is breathable. And flicked down its helmet, which it was programmed to do, but Rita being my mother's name. Note, the doll had buttons to press for it to speak, and they were programmed phrases from the movie. The original phrase for this was, quote, the air is breathable, as the doll flicks down his space helmet. Everyone went quiet, and I remember not hearing it the first time, but hearing it the second time, when my mother pressed it again. Hello, Rita. The air is breathable. I sobbed. I was terrified. My brother and I each held each other. My mother sat there frozen as my sisters and their friends sat there in disbelief. My mother pressed the doll a few times to make sure she wasn't hearing things, and each time she did it, it was the same phrase being said with her name in it. My mother doesn't believe in possessions or demons. She'd rather believe in ghosts and angels, as she says, quote, the dead won't hurt you, but the living will. So from this, my mother believed it was her younger brother who passed away a couple of months before this encounter who was reaching out to her through my brother's doll and that he picked my brother's doll because he was my brother's godfather. But who knows? My mother did end up getting freaked out after a while and started having thoughts about whether or not it was her younger brother. What makes it more chilling is the fact that the doll had no batteries in him whatsoever and there was no way to make him talk without batteries. The doll turned on and spoke when my mother pressed one of the buttons while it was off. Everyone was freaked out when they remembered that the doll had no batteries, as everyone got so distracted by the fact it said my mother's name. My mother became freaked out, probably by her children saying that it's some creepy possessed doll, so she went outside to put it on the porch. She wanted to bin it, but it was pouring down rain and dark, and at the moment, she couldn't find shoes, so she just improvised. A day later, my neighbor's son saw the doll. He was around the same age as my brother and asked if we were throwing it out, and my mother said yes, so she gave it to him. A few days later, the Buzz Lightyear doll was in their dumpster. No one knows what happened with the doll, whether my neighbors saw it as junk and threw it out or whether they got freaked out too. Nobody asked them. Why? Still, Why not? It's the first thing I would do. Right? <laughs> did, it, did it talk to you guys too? Yeah. Still, to this day, I wish somebody would have recorded it as proof that it happened because it was terrifying. It'd give you chills, including the fact it does not work without batteries. It goes to show not everything gets recorded, so who knows what else is out there and what stories people have that are 100% true. I'm lucky that I was around family and my sister's friend when this happened, so they can all back me up. Wow. All of us encountered it. Anyways, that's my supernatural encounter that I will forever remember. I mean, I like the mom's positive swing on it. I definitely do. <laughs> Lightens the mood for you a little bit yeah, down there. It does. I I would just love to experience this. <laughs> that would be so badass. The toy all of a sudden starts saying your name. That'd I'm, be so cool. I'm picturing no. like a Peter Griffin type of dad just like in the corner like he like he was the one who programmed the doll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a long bad dad joke. <laughs> no batteries needed. Yeah. Yeah. It is something else, man. I I don't know about this one because at the time, like I remember seeing that doll too. And like she sent a picture of what exactly what doll it was. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just that standard, like, Buzz that's Lightyear. That's the one? No, wow. no, no, no. Oh, just, like, that's the type. Off Google. <laughs> yeah. Why is it never recorded? Is that because it won't happen if you're recording? It do, I think it's because people know? are It just happens Shocked. so fast. Yeah. Yeah, you but, You can't like, react that quick. Also- oh, People now could. You All you have yeah. to do is, like- yeah, the ghosts stay at bay now that people have iPhones. They're like, mm -hmm. fuck As that. soon as I- if That's I why saw they do it in the middle of the night. It would be instant. It would be like, And as soon as Apple Watch has a camera- no one stands a chance. Just poof, done. That's the actual Buzz gotcha. Lightyear move. I got gotcha. Yeah. And then you're like, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> oh my God, it is. That's exactly what Buzz Lightyear That's does. Good. So I have a question uh, okay. for the crowd here. Oh, okay. Meaning you guys. Mm. Okay. Not our people that are going to be well, yeah, sure. tuning yeah. in. But I need instant responses. Okay. Right? Fair enough. So if you were to know someone very closely and you said, let's say they're significantly older than you. Like a great grandparent or a grandparent, whatever. 
Okay. You know, there's kind of this pact to say, hey, if there is something more, if there is something greater, if there is something after, I will find a way to let you know. I will find a way. Because in all of the, in a lot of these stories, not necessarily just the ones in this episode, but a lot of the paranormal and these experiences, a lot of it think, you know, a lot of people associate it with someone trying to reach out Mm -hmm. and someone who maybe lost their life unexpectedly, uh, way too early. And they say, all right, you know. (laughs) Why are you laughing? (laughs) Your face. (laughs) I just need to do a zoom on Lauren's face. I'm 100% listening to you. Uh But your face and the reactions you were making as he's talking. I was taking it in. Priceless. (laughs) She's crying. <laughs> oh my God. Her okay, little- Lauren, this question's for you because <laughs> you're actually paying attention. No, no, no. She was deep in thought. It was insane watching I appreciate her face. That. <laughs> I'm, it just like, I couldn't, I can't get over it. And I'm asking this because my dad had this, I think it was a great aunt. And she, when she was, she was sickly, she was like, Oh you know, yeah, you told the story was, on Patreon. Yeah, and so she or it might have been an episode or something. It was Patreon. Okay. And so she was like she knew like her time was coming and she was come she was accepting of that. Mm-hmm. And she was kind of the type who just was like always trying to figure things out. And she just like would be this type of person. Mm-hmm. And she said to him, If there is something after, if there is something more. I will find a way to let you know. And that happened, I think, when my dad was pretty young, maybe when he was our age, and there's never been a single sign, nothing. And so um, my question is, do you think if you make that kind of pact, let's call it, or that promise, do you think you are then blocked from actually letting that person or anyone around them know? Because if there is that ability to connect from the Mm -hmm. other side, then why has there never been anything like that? Well, okay. The, so if I'm, if I'm honest, like on my take of all of this, it's that I feel, and I kind of mentioned this too, like I don't necessarily picture it as somebody, like if I were to die right now and then it's like my, the figure of myself, and I'm just bopping around being like, hey, ha, ha, hi guys. Right. Like, I don't picture that. I don't picture that I'm like, I'm not like a sentient being. I don't like picture that type of ghostly interaction. Like I, that's why I was asking you about like what ghosts attach to you. Because to me, I picture it as like a store, a storage of energy. So it's like my presence on earth is still stored here somehow. And if there was a place that I were to be all the time, there is this like energy source that there's this memory that the world, the world remembers. Not that like I'm physically there aware of what's going on, but that people will experience the memory of me. So that's, what's, what's that with the, with the Buzz Lightyear? That's a fucking well, possessed doll. Y- so, and it, yeah. And oh, so, so you're seeing it as more of the, like the dark side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, no, I don't know about that wow. because like that, I mean, the mom has like was on something good, but like, but these are the, like these type of stories are ones that I don't really, it kind of throws off my theory. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I think like what you're like, well, my they take, can coexist, I think too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just, yeah. 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 Sorry. I think, well, and I think maybe by saying like, if there's something there, I'll find a way to tell you. Like, I think that's kind of making a bargain you can't keep. Or a promise. It's make, making a promise you can't keep, because obviously it depends on what you believe in. I believe in reincarnation, so maybe she didn't learn her lessons in this life and therefore was reincarnated, mm-hmm. or maybe she did complete her lessons and is on a different plane right. to where she's not able to communicate. Mm-hmm. Like I personally think that spirits that are still here are unresolved. Mm-hmm. Yo, yeah, I've, I've heard that a lot too. And so I, that makes sense. And I have a story. I'm not sure if we'll read it today because we have so many other ones, but I will share all of these listener write-ins. I'll make the Google Doc for it available so you guys can read them all. But um, there is another one from a girl who, after her grandma died, all of these strange happenings started like going on in the house mm-hmm. for years. And then one night, her mom had a dream where her mom the writer's grandma visited her and said, you know, 
I'm moving on. I'm at peace now. And after her mom had that dream, everything stopped. Wow. And so I think there's yeah. so many different levels to this and what mm-hmm. you believe in really matters. But I don't know. Like I, I, I think there is something to do with like unresolved, resolved and like reincarnation is a big thing. Like I just, um, my dad came in and he like burst into our room the other day and he goes, Oh my God, you got to watch this video. And he accidentally refreshed his TikTok page, but it ended up coming back up on mine oddly. Oh, really? Yeah. And so it's a story about this little girl who wow. like was talking to her mom and her mom was calling her Claire and she goes, my name's not Claire. My name's so-and-so. And she goes, I have two daughters and I died in a building that got hit by a plane. And so the narrator is like, no, not 9-11 and not the Twin Towers. Mm. This woman died 80 years ago in in uh, an accident when the Empire State Building was hit by a plane. And so it turns out this little four-year-old girl had the memories of this woman. And like they tracked down the two daughters mm-hmm. and all this crazy shit. I have seen some crazy stuff like that before, yeah. some crazy stories. And like honestly, for both of you guys, like I, I don't— I don't have a hard view or like decision on any of my takes. And it's kind of fun that all three of us have presented different options. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you ready for yeah, the Yeah, there was like one? that little boy yeah. that told very detailed stories from a yeah. war or something. Yeah, he was a fighter pilot. And then they, he actually gave the name of the ship he was on and yeah. they looked it up. And the name of his plane wow. that he flew in. And Which they you found- couldn't look up. No. Wow. And they found out that he died like in action or something. Mm-hmm. That is His plane went down and he, he even said like, yeah, my plane went down in the ocean or blah, 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 blah. Cause it started as his parents took him to a war museum with airplanes. And he said, that's what I used to fly. Oh, it's so I insane. just want to know. Well, and, and in terms of like physics and whatnot, it's, you know, you always hear that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So it does make you think like reincarnation, like uh, the memory of the world, the uh, all of this stuff. It's so interesting. Well, I think fun fact, matter and energy are basically the same thing. I don't know. What? Like, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> like Matter, like things that you see and uh-huh. can touch and feel. Yeah. Are just basically energy. They yeah. can they can. Matter can turn into energy. Energy can turn into matter. It's all kind of the same. I think shit. you're. I think you're closer to believing in ghosts than you think. I'm like. I'm not open. I don't want to get possessed and like no. wake up to some dark figure with eyes like terrorizing me. That's no. not what I'm want. No, no, I don't, no. Who who wants that? No one. But it's more. Just, yeah. I just want to see like someone float by and like give her a little wave. I'd be pumped. Maybe we should open. I the would curtains. be so pumped. Well, we're going to go walk around the hotel in our costumes. Maybe the ghosts will be more perceptive to these outfits and who knows. But I will say the movie, the movie that really fucked me up as a kid and made me believe in reincarnation. It was so sad, you guys. Maybe someone else remembers it out there, but it was a movie about a dog, technically. I think it was called Fluke. Mm -hmm. And it was this little brown dog on the case of the movie. And so this dad was married, had a kid, a son, and uh, his like friend killed him or something, like drove him off the road. And so he came back mm. as a dog. Whoa. And his little boy like adopted oh. him as the dog. <laughs> and um, it's like Jack Frost. Yeah. And the guy that killed him ended up like trying to swoop in on his wife and oh, God. All this stuff. Yeah. Damn. It's kind of it's like Jack Frost. Yeah. That's a great movie, too. Yeah. See, a movie or a story is not, it's not going to get me there. No, but I, maybe well, it's, it's, yeah. Maybe this next one will. <laughs> okay. Um, so it, it starts off. If you don't know what the black eyed children are, I will briefly sum it up before going into my experience. The black eyed children are supposedly demonic spirits that camouflage themselves into kids that are in need of help in hopes you let them in. Their eyes are jet black and big. In my experience, they also had black mouths with visible purpley veins. And they are scary. After reading my experience, I suggest looking up the Black Eyed Children. I know Reddit actually has a bunch of stories on experiences with them. Or even look on Google. It is terrifying. I, 25 female, live in a secluded, quiet neighborhood surrounded by acres and acres of forest land at the base of the foothills in Washington State. My friend, Caitlin, 25 female, lives about 20-ish minutes south of my house in a neighboring town. To get to town where Caitlin lives, I have to drive on a very long stretch of road, probably 10 miles long, 
that is very secluded with forest land on both sides and for the most part is always quiet. Hardly ever do I pass a car on this road and if I do, it's maybe one to three cars max. This road runs alongside an old train track on one side and a river on the other. One day, Caitlin and I were driving from her house headed north to my house. It was the middle of the day, sunny and quiet. Caitlin, who has a tendency to like to scare me, suddenly gasps audibly and kind of like flinches. I was driving and it made me jump. So I yelled, what? What happened? She said, you didn't see those kids? And I said, no, don't freak me out. She said, weird. I swear I saw kids, but maybe I didn't. They were just like standing over there. I swear. I shrugged it off and ensured her I didn't see anything. I really didn't think anything of this exchange later either, other than that it was random and weird. Typical Caitlin, lol. Three days later, I was home alone. My husband is in Montana hunting on a week-long trip, so I decide I'm going to have a sleepover at Caitlin's house, so I'm not bored at home and alone. It's the middle of November, it's late, probably 8 p.m. or so when we decide that I'm going to go over to her house, I pack my overnight bag and head out. It is pitch black outside as I make it to the long, secluded road headed south. Like usual, I'm the only one on the secluded road. My brights are on, and I'm probably one mile in. When I see this big, bright light, probably a football field length away from me, it's so hard to describe because it's not like a typical light. It's not casting light across the road or in the trees. It's just this huge ball of light that is on the left side of the road. And it's like, I can't stop looking at it. As I get closer, I see three human kid-like figures in the light. And as I drive by, I look directly at the figures. And what I see next, I will never be able to forget. There is a figure of a girl on the left medium height. I can tell she has light brown shoulder length hair and it's kind of frizzy and wavy. I can't see any physical facial features, but I can tell it's a girl. Like I can see the whole outline of her body, like a glowing silhouette. As if she is standing in front of the light I see. On the far right of the group, there is a very tall male figure, completely shadowed out. Like a shadow person, I can see it is a tall male, broad frame, but that's it. Unlike the girl, it's not a glowing silhouette, but a tall black one, literally like a huge shadow. And then in the middle, clear as day, I see a little boy, probably like age 10 or so, holding a lantern. He looks straight out of the early 90s. He is very pale, has a bowl cut and blonde hair, light blue pants, white sneakers, and a red jacket. His eyes were were completely black and very big. His mouth was slightly parted and in between his lips was also completely black. Around his mouth looked really veiny, but the veins were dark purple and spider-like. I freaked out and it felt like I floored it the rest of the way to town, making sure I didn't look in my rearview mirror the whole time. In fear, I would see them in my back seat or something. Oh my God. It was such a scary feeling, seriously indescribable, not to mention I don't have service at all on this road. I felt like the road was extra long, and even though I know I was driving, it felt like I was going in a never-ending tunnel, like I could see the end of the road, but I couldn't get there quick enough. And then I remembered Caitlin's and Mai's exchange the other day when she asked me if I saw the kids. As soon as I got service, I called Caitlin. I'm not joking. I was like hyperventilating at this point, and I told her I saw the three kids she saw the other day. The first thing she says after I tell her I saw them was, quote, was there a little boy, and was he wearing a red jacket? My heart dropped. Whoa. I couldn't believe it. I didn't tell her any of the details I had saw other than I saw three kids. How the fuck could she have known there was a little boy in a red jacket? I begged her to stay on the phone for the rest of my drive until I got to her driveway and ran into her house, where she confirmed, without me saying anything, every detail in the three kids I saw as well. What is most puzzling to me is how Caitlin saw them in broad daylight right next to me, and I didn't see them. 
at all. What is also confusing is how I could so clearly see these kids in the middle of the night. The road I am on is a 45 mile per hour road, and it feels like I looked over for just a second, but somehow it felt like I was looking at them for a long time. But I never stopped my car. It was almost like I drove by in slow-mo or something. I can't even describe it. Once my husband got home from hunting, I told him everything, and I also told and I also told his dad. His dad was the one to tell me about these black-eyed children, and I couldn't believe it. It's so crazy that this is something that other people have also experienced, and in some cases, in a way scarier scenario. It's safe to say I still get freaked out every time I drive that road alone at night, but this was a couple years ago and I haven't seen them since. Neither has Caitlin. So maybe they have traveled somewhere else now. By far the scariest encounter I have ever had. It still gives me chills even typing out, and every time I tell the experience. Oh, that's fucking insane. I've never heard of this before. No. I wonder if there's, like, pictures of them drawn out. Black eyed. Oh, God. Oh, God. You see anything? Yeah. I feel like they've been in a bunch of horror movies. Is this a horror? I mean, I'm sure it's been turned into the a reality. The black-eyed thing, yeah. Yeah, so black-eyed children, the chilling legend that began in Abilene. And I mean, I I don't, I can't tell if this is like dramatized for the thing, but yeah, it definitely is something that is going to give me nightmares for what's, sure. What's the idea behind it? It's that they're different spirits disguised as kids, or like I don't understand what the whole thought theory is. Um. So here's a picture of a real one. What? What do you mean? Here's a picture of what? That was casually what? A real like an actual picture that someone took of a real one. What do you mean? Yeah. So this what? is. Oh my god! I don't know if I can do it. Oh, I can't. I can't. Oh god! Oh god! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, my god. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. oh yeah, it's so gross. It's just a little kid. I know, but I don't want to see it. I'm scared. So this image is like of a child crouching next to a tree. And literally hundreds of years of reported hauntings and mysterious sightings are waiting for you as you walk. How does that look like a kid? A little kid crouching. It just looks like the bush next to it. Okay. I'm okay. It's not that crazy. I (laughs) Justin said I just made up something in my head and got scared. It honestly looks like (laughs) a little It honestly looks like a little astronaut. Looks like a little uh, helmet. I mean, there's this one, though, where it does look like a child in an old, like, sailor suit. Like, you know, the kids that used to, like, um, like on the Titanic, they would have, like, the sailor, like, little bibs. And you can just see. Is that Justin Bieber? To the left? It does kind of look like him. Hmm. But you can definitely see, like, an old little sailor costume. He's one, too. Of the kid with the dark, blacked out eyes. Like, that is clearly hair apart, eyes, nose, and the eyes are just blacked out hollow of a little kid standing behind a tree. Also, this damn car alarm needs to shut off. Maybe it was the black eyed kids. Literally. (laughs) Don't speak about it. I keep thinking that I hear noises too, which is probably normal because Um, we probably are hearing noises, but then it's like. I didn't want to say anything at the time because, like, I'm like, okay, I'm the only one that can see it. But, like, I literally saw, like, something jut by my eyes over here by this pole. Stop. Dead ass. <laughs> but, like, I'm the only one that can see this. And I'm also reading. So I'm like, maybe my eyes are fatigued and tired. That's definitely coming through the mics. Brief interruption for a car alarm that will not fucking stop. One hour later. One. Oh, they knocked? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even hear it. Wow. Wine. Coming. <laughs> That's the ring light. Hi. Uh, would you like me to bring this in? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. And where would you like me to set this? Um. I know we got a podcast going. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, but this is, you're helping us. Oh, perfect. Wherever Thank you want to throw it. Um, have you had any scary interact- inter- interactions here? Yes. No, I have not. I would have quit. <laughs> oh, I Seriously. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we're doing ghost stories right now, so that's why uh, I wanted to know. Some of the housekeeping crew have, but me, no. Any crazy stories that <laughs> you're you are like, thank God. That they told you? Crazy? Yeah, one time that uh, I was told the housekeeping, they had someone, I never said any of this, uh, uh-huh. but they had someone like, um, like call out for them, and then they turned around and nobody was there. And I was, I've heard of one of my coworkers, like they felt like they were pushed down the stairs. Um, I think 401. Oh. 
But they say up the fourth floor is where it's more like yeah. That's this, this yeah, floor. where we're at. Wow. Yeah. But me, thankfully, no. That's good. I wouldn't be able to handle it. You stay on the first floor. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If I saw anything, I just close my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank How you. Is, of course. How is your night going? Good. It's going good. I'm, ter- I'm terrified. We're like, <laughs> this is scary to hear these stories. We have like listener write-ins, and they're telling us crazy things. Oh, about mission in? No. Oh no. Thank no. Otherwise, there. I would literally. Yeah. Be okay. No. Lauren wouldn't be here right now if yeah. it was about the hotel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been here for two years, so oh. we should be fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you so uh, much. Good night. Thank you. I mean, imagine if you had the lights like clearly set up around the bed and they're like, you want me to bring this in? You're like, yeah. <laughs> like, no, don't mind us. We're not filming a porno right? or anything. Right? Around the bed. Yeah. I know her face. That's why I was like, oh, we're filming a podcast. Right. Like her face when she saw the ring light, it was like. We're wearing onesies, you know, what it's like. That is a fetish. I mean, people wear furry costumes. That's true. Okay, go. What I was going to say about my mom is that my mom is just, she's always been such a brave person. Like she will go up to situations, confrontation, like a big scary man and like be like, da, 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 da. Like she like will stand up for herself. She's, she's always been like that. Yeah. It was so crazy one day when she told me how terrified she was because she was, she's a realtor and she went into an open house and she didn't have like fears about this going into it before just in general you know she that wasn't something that was ever like on her mind and she went in there and she instantly felt this weird like feeling like she felt it was a freaky like energy all around her and she was like this is weird and she goes downstairs to do whatever make like kind of like rearrange the furniture she puts a box down right by the door and and I don't remember the story exactly I'd have to ask her when she comes back up from being downstairs there's no one there by the way this house is like in the middle of nowhere and she comes back up and the box is moved to the other side of the room no yeah and she instantly like ran out of there she left the lights on like (laughs) ah she because she like normally would shut them out but she was like i need to leave i need to get out of here that's terrifying Mm -hmm. like a little thing like that but it's like there was no mistake she didn't go to that corner of the the room no you know like not even for a second something moved it all Absolutely. of this just seriously, I just want to watch some. Like, I want to rewatch The Nun. I want to watch all of those classics. What's the other one? Hereditary? That, that one one's was badass, too. No, 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 no. Well, you like Quiet Place. I just watched the Quiet Place movies. They're so the good. Yeah, yeah. Yes. There's, but it's like an alien. It's not a ghost. Yeah, I agree. I it's I so different. Yeah, like, give me alien stuff mm-hmm. all day, but like, yeah. when it's ghosts, like, because I do believe in ghosts. Like, I really do. And I just shit that like aliens aren't real yet, yet you know. So it's like it's still fake. To yeah, me. I get what so you're it's saying. like, but like ghosts, I do believe are real. So anything that's like ghost or paranormal related freaks me out because I fully believe it could happen. Well, something also about like a alien is that they're tangible. Like you could fight yourself off with them. You know, they're there and then they're not if you fight them. Yeah, but a ghost. But a ghost, it's just kind of like they're, they're boom. You know, unstoppable. Yeah. What were you gonna say? Is what um, it feels like. I I know like a lot. Sometimes this comes up in the in the studio, honestly. And we had this girl tell this story where she was filming a TikTok or something, uh, or, or on she has the video, and oh, all of a sudden, yeah, scariest video. I don't remember the story, but you can clearly see it. She turns and she's like videotaping and talking and whatever. And in the back, there's like a a space like that where there's a doorway. And then um, in the video, there's a hallway. So that would be like a little doorway right there to a hallway. Mm -hmm. And you see this figure turning to walk down the hallway. And there was no one else there, that kind of thing. So um, we had a full day in the studio that was all stories like this. And Mm -hmm. I have the video. I do. I know you've shown it to me and I actually, I came across it organically on TikTok. And so it it did go viral on TikTok Mm -hmm. and they were, they were playing this game in their living room. It's, it's the the ring one. That's what it was. That's what it was. You hold the ring and let the ring go and it goes on a hook. Mm -hmm. And as they're playing this game, they pan the camera to record around the room 
And as they pan over the doorway... They weren't turning to record the room. They were just simply like recording. filming their game and she turns it back on herself and you see it behind her or something. Yeah. yeah. And so as she either flips the camera or pans, I can't remember exactly, there's a girl standing there in a nightgown what? and walks past the well, opening of the room, like the doorway, walks that's past right. the doorway. It's like a white thing and then total black hair it's so scary and it wasn't there i gotta try and find this the girl what? was not there no doors were open or unlocked there was no one living in their walls they broke their lease and actually moved out what the because fuck? they were so freaked out i would that does happen though I people would. do live in yeah. people's walls i mean i tried to find it just now and there's actually other tiktoks I believe, it. I believe it there's literally someone waiting to come out of that wall right now I mean, that is a rather thick wall. Like, what's actually in there? The There's, bathroom doesn't go that deep. You're right. And then where do the stairs go to? Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> That's wishful thinking. Or a dungeon. Well, I have two questions, very important questions, for you guys and for the entire THT fam. One, what is more? what would be more scary if there was an actual person hiding in your room or a ghost in your room? actual person there's a greater chance they could actually fuck me up versus the ghost okay not as tangible i always get really scared walking out what to my car knew, at night what if you knew that slash my ankles oh god i used to think that what? when i was little i forgot about that because i watched a movie where that happened yeah there used to thanks be thanks for reminding me women like women would get attacked or like people would get attacked by someone hiding under their car, car. and cutting their achilles tendon so they couldn't run away so oh, every time I walk to my car at night, I like unlock my car and I kind cringe. of like hop in. Okay. People have been through some bad let shit. Me, let me ask you this mm -hmm. again. What if there was, what if you knew the outcome was you're going to be fine? Yeah. Regardless, you'll be 100% fine. You'll escape, get away, whatever. Like everything will be fine. Still, what do you think would be scarier? A ghost or a person? A real person. What about you, Justin? Would you yeah. pick ghost? I don't know. I'm torn. Because it's like, what if it was just a person who literally, I like, I don't know, was having like a f freak out? And I don't, I don't know. Like Lauren yeah. would get both at the same time. God damn it! And they're like in collusion. Yeah, <laughs> she in would. Cahoots. Cahoots, yeah. Oh my god! No, no. she absolutely would. Oh, oh fuck. Fuck. <laughs> and maybe we're answering the way we're answering because we're actually watching The Watcher right now, which mm -hmm. like. Uh, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but like it's very early on in the first episode. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this isn't that serious you gotta to, watch to it, say, Lord. but oh, it fuck. is, it is. I need someone to watch it with me. It's really good so far. Um, but there's a guy that's like in this dumb waiter, which is like an Ooh. elevator for food in the house and they open it and he's like in there. Mm -hmm. And so it's just really creepy. <sighs> like, I think that a person would be, a, a, that would make the most sense. Like you said, logical reason, mm -hmm. like, they could hurt you like <laughs> they're not there to be friendly yeah and but i think the thing that would scare me with ghosts is just the continuous feeling of like how long will you follow me forever like that one story yeah, in the beginning that yeah, is true. true okay lauren moving on to your story do you want to read or do you want me to read i think you have such a good reading voice and okay. although i'm working on it i'm gonna sound more like a robot like i'm reading a textbook whereas like you just you just have it so good okay so Lauren helped me find stories for this because there were so many in the Google Drive, Google Forms, which I, I appreciate everyone that wrote in. I appreciate it so, so much. And I'll I'll try to find a way where I can just copy them and share them so we can all like look at them because I think these paranormal stories are really, really good and fascinating. So Lauren found the next two I'm about to read. I have no idea what they are, so I am going in blind and totally... Blind reacting to these. I'm a little scared. Fuck yeah. Okay. I'm not really sure where to begin as this isn't technically my experience, but rather a collection of experiences from my mom and older siblings. To preface, this all happened in the early 90s and my mom was still married to her now ex-husband. My older brother was around three when they moved into their first home. The house was a small two bedroom with a crawl space underneath. It was built in the 1930s and they were in the process of renovating when my mom found out she was pregnant with my sister. Weird things started happening pretty much immediately. First, it was just small, creepy incidents like cabinet doors being open or keys moving across the countertop, but then things escalated. My brother was becoming very skittish and started talking to himself, or at least that's what it seemed like. Something important to mention is that my mom has always been especially in tune with the supernatural, kind of like a medium, 
She would see things, but never mentioned them to my brother because she didn't want to scare him. One day, she was sitting in his room cleaning out his closet. He was on the bed playing with toys, and when she finished, she stood up and closed the door to his closet. My brother began screaming at the top of his lungs for her to open the door and continued saying they would get mad and that he could hear them trying to get out at night. My mom was very disturbed by this and opened the closet door, but left it alone after that. One night, my brother comes running into my mom's room, screaming and crying, but my mom hushes him and gets him to fall asleep next to her. The next day, she asks him what happened. Did he have a nightmare? And was he okay? My brother looked at her, tears welling again in his eyes, and he lifted a blood-crusted finger with bite marks on it as he said, quote, the evil boy hit me. My mom was horrified. One of the apparitions my mom recalls seeing the most in that house is one of a boy, about 10 to 12 years old wearing an older-looking paperboy outfit. And from what she has said of this spirit, he was up to no good. Several times, she would see him peeking at her from around corners, just wrapping his fingers into the wall, peeking his eyes around slowly. She tried to ask her husband and other friends and family who visited if they saw him too, but everyone brushed her off and deemed her the crazy lady. Until one day, just past Christmas, when my brother's aunt came by to drop off some gifts. My mom and brother met her in the driveway. They had been talking for a bit when his aunt looked past and asked if my brother had a friend visiting. And when my mom said no, her face turned white as she asked, quote, who is standing in the window? My mom had a small grin when she realized someone else had finally seen him. Crazy reaction, by the way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Small grin. Yeah, Yeah, like, oh, there's the crazy lady smiling at a ghost. No, but just the satisfaction she must have felt. For for sure, yeah. Oh, my God. My brother kept getting worse. He wouldn't sleep at night because he was terrified. He became more aggressive and was starting to change in strange ways. My mom heard him talking to himself in the kitchen one day, saying things like, quote, no, I don't want to do that. Mommy will get mad at me. After which my mom interrupted, asking who he was talking to. He death stared her, replying, no one. Some point shortly after this incident, my mom noticed that all of the knives were starting to go missing, but she could not figure out where they were. One day, she goes in to clean my brother's room and lifts the comforter, knowing the tricks of little boys trying to hide toys. But she was shocked to find all of the missing knives. When she asked my brother why he had them under his bed, his response was aboard, the mean boy told me to. My sister was born in early December, and at this point, my brother would either stay in the living room or my mom's room because he refused to sleep in his bed. The only problem with this was that he was supposed to be sharing a room with the baby. My mom decided to put the crib in the room anyways to try and get my sister adjusted to sleeping there, but this quickly changed when once again my mom was awoken by the screams of one of her children. Mind you, at this point my sister was still a newborn, so she couldn't roll or move around in her crib. My mom said she was terrified when she walked into the room and saw my sister's legs pulled through the bar of the crib with handprints on her thighs. The only people in the house were my mom and brother, as her husband worked overnight. Things became so extreme that they decided to ask different churches to come and bless the house, but my brother was still exhibiting extreme and abnormal behaviors, so it was recommended that they do a prayer circle and bless him. The way my mom describes this moment sounds like it is out of a movie, but she said that several members from the church, as well as a priest and some family members, formed a circle around my brother and held candles as they prayed over my brother who is described as looking furious, quote, empty behind the eyes and scary. I'm not really sure what the outcome of this situation was, but I do know that they ended up moving out of the house shortly after the blessing occurred. I'm not sure if later experiences in mine and my siblings' lives can be attributed to things that happened in that house, but our family has always had some shadow following us. Please move out of houses right away if something happens. Instantly. 
Would you, Justin? Well, clearly not. You have a dog that's staring at a ghost every day and you're fine. So I would be, well, <laughs> I would be so distraught. Yeah. That's, I think that's, a little, I mean, it's different y- when yeah, you see of course. some shit, but when you have a kid that's starting to, oh yeah, like change and shit, I, I don't know. I don't know. Did she see it? Yeah. So she the saw, mom saw and it. then. And then the other, what was it? The sister or the friend? Aunt. The, or aunt, friend. the aunt, aunt came by. Yeah. yeah. Because that's the thing. You see it and you're like, well, I'm, I'm open to spirit. So it's not unusual for me to see things. But then you have your son who starts seeing things. And Still you're like. knives and shit. And then your sister. Because that would be your sister, right? Uh, sister or sister-in-law. I think maybe her husband's Probably sister. Probably OP's aunt, maybe. Okay. That is literally some movie shit. The, yeah. The mommy won't like that. Yeah. But that, I mean, you think about it. And if you have Terrifying. a child, because I mean, children have invisible friends, imaginary friends. That's sometimes normal. But what if every single case of an imaginary friend is a spirit? Think about it. Child are, children are more sensitive. They're predisposed to seeing things. Kids just simply have a more open mind just for the pure fact they haven't been, for the lack of a better term, brainwashed by the society we live in. I mean, there's there's no, like you, the studies on how much your creativity is killed throughout your mm-hmm. times mm-hmm. between like when you're really young and when you get through finish high school or college. I mean, your creativity is just completely demolished. But so, I think in this case, like this is definitely... I'm just saying, like, yeah. I'm saying your mind is so transformed through growing up in the society we live in. Well, here is an actual, like, a, a connection, parallel, whatever. But we were talking about why do they visit people in your sleep? And then it's like, well, why are they visiting children? It's like, these are vulnerable states. Yeah. And they're naive. Mm-hmm. They don't know, you know, all the things adults know. They haven't been taught that spirits could be bad I mean, we had another another story we read on uh, an episode, I think with Alejandra, or maybe it was Patreon. So if, if you haven't heard it yet, it's probably Patreon. But a listener's grandma called them after the grandma had already been dead for hours and left a voicemail. And so they had this whole belief in their culture that if a spirit is reaching out after, it, I mean, it could spirit you away. It could essentially steal the children. What? How? It just... I don't understand. Yeah. Being spirited away is like a thing. So why is the whole spirit, ghost, why is this always, 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 it seems to be negative? It's in horror films where it's like, oh my God, that's my worst absolute goddamn nightmare. Because isn't it? And all these stories are so terrible. Why can't it be, why is it always, uh, why is it always like spirits are bad? That's, it's not always like that. We've I've definitely heard like good spirit stories too, but I think, I think as humans, like we really fear what we don't know and what we don't understand. Definitely. Definitely. But it's like, if you had, if these were all positive, like, oh my God, I had an interaction with a grandparent I had lost that I was so close to. How many movie tickets would that sell though? (laughs) Like that's the whole point of movies. Yeah, like you're yeah, talking yeah. about movies. Yeah. It's like sharks. Like sharks are not nearly as dangerous as they're made out to be. But damn, was Jaws a blockbuster? But all these yeah. write-ins are like, there was this. It's it just just sounds so evil. Well, I yeah. have positive ones too. I just didn't oh. pick them. Yeah, because it's uh, scary season. Justin, keep up. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the main figures of like Halloween and spookiness is a ghost. Okay, but also at the same time, look at like uh, Dia de los Muertes. Oh, fuck, literally, fuck my accent. I can't say Spanish. Dia words. de los Muertos. Muertos. Yes, thank you. Where it's um, celebrated. Yeah. Yeah, where it's celebrated. It's Ghost, beautiful. The dad, like, it's, always it's a wanted. beautiful concept. So it's like- <sighs> I just want we, that to be a part of my culture so bad. I'm so envious. It's well, so beautiful. Yeah, and think about it with, um, think about it with, when we talk about stuff, like we've all heard that whole, well, I guess we shouldn't say we've all heard it, but like if that whole thing where it's like, look around and f- tell me, like think about how many orange things you see in the room. And then you close your eyes and you say, okay, how many red things do you see? And you're like, I have no idea because I wasn't looking for it. So it's like in our culture, it is very like common to stigmatize the ghostly experiences. So we are looking for those scary things where it's like, then you hear about uh, Dia de los Muertos. 
Muertos. Like Dia de los Muertos. I'm going to go literally like you need to crop that out because I'm embarrassed at how horrible my accent is. And say it one more time. You got it. Dia de los Muertos. Beautiful. Okay. Crushed it. Yeah. I don't speak Spanish yeah, organically, yeah, right. but I just, I just don't want me. anyone to be like, fuck you. Don't even try to say things. No, that no, you no, can't no. Say. <laughs> That's how we learn languages though. I know. That's how we learn. It's why languages. I didn't learn it. It's so sad. Let's take a trip and let's do an immersion and just like, we'll practice on Babbel before mm -hmm. and then we'll go and we'll take a trip and just literally we cannot speak English the entire time we're there. Okay. We'll get it down. I can read a lot Unless better Unless some I crazy shit goes talk. down. It's like, bro, I just saw a fucking ghost in the corner. Yeah. No, You're not going to like try to put the words together and yeah, figure, no, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, well, then, uh, then we'll un talk. Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> un ghost. Un spirit. Yeah. Yeah, no, but we, we got this. Okay. Uh, Keep on, sorry. Oh, so anyway, yeah, my point is, is that like in a culture that looks at the afterlife and these spirits visiting as so positive mm -hmm. then they constantly have these stories about positive interactions so i mean i will we'll be ending on a positive one tonight too so nice don't oh. worry and i've also i think i've said this before on the podcast and then i'm not sure if it was a patreon or not but and i'm not saying that this is necessarily like a spiritual visit but kind of because when i was little like my grandma died when i was i don't know maybe like six or something i was really young and i don't i have memories of her but i don't have a ton of memories and i have only dreamed of her one time in my life that i can remember mm -hmm. and my grandma had died like six months or a year prior to this dream and I woke up in the morning and I didn't even think about saying anything. And all I saw was like, I had this like vision of my grandma's face smiling, so warm and so like much love in this dream. And I woke up and I didn't even think about telling my mom, but then I was like, she might like to hear it. So I told her that I had a dream of grandma and my mom's jaw dropped because she was like, I had a dream of grandma last night too. Wow. Yeah. And it was just like the the overlap of it was just amazing. And it's like we, of course, it could be a coincidence, but like it felt like she really yeah. did come down and like say that we're like that I'm with you. I fully, fully believe that spirit visiting in dreams as a thing. And I think it goes back to the sleep and being vulnerable. It's an easy time for them to access us because I have had. And my dad has had, we talked about this on the Patreon episode, my dad's dreams about his mom. And when my grandma passed, I think it was about the same mark. I don't, I don't really remember, but I had a dream of my grandma and I was in the dream at her funeral and she sat up in the coffin, which a little freaky in the dream, but yeah. she sat up in the coffin and looked at me and she goes, Morgan, this is okay. I'm mm. okay. Just know, that's nuts. Just know I'm at peace. Oh, and then like literally laid back down and wow. like I woke up. But like I think it was her that's way wild. of like telling me like I'm okay. Like and she yeah. was she was such a spiritual woman. And yeah, I it was also like she died in our home that we lived in with yeah. her. Like I grew up her with her mm -hmm. being super close. Like she she also basically raised me. Yeah. So she's like, don't worry, I will not haunt you. I yeah. actually have everything resolved here and I'm going up. Well, it is. Did she die at the condo? No. Um, this is my grandma, my great grandma, Ellen, who oh, died. Oh, okay. She I died at my farmhouse in Minnesota. Oh. Yeah. She died actually right outside my bedroom door. So okay, I thought that's, you're... that's the crazy part. Like I don't really have the greatest relationship with my bio dad and I, mm -hmm. I never, never like really slept at his house. Mm -hmm. And so it was really interesting that like the weekend my grandma passed was yeah. like the only weekend I stayed at my dad's house because if I would have walked out of my bedroom door, I would have seen her right in front of me. Wow. Well, hmm. That's that's so beautiful though. I mean, it is really cool to have those experiences and whether we can put, yeah. you know, what we, you know, we can't fact check them, but we can feel it in our heart and that's it's, amazing. Yeah. And I think so many of us, I mean, a lot of the listener write-ins I've had um, one that is also, I'll make sure is in the doc. And if it's not in there, I will get it in there because I just, I don't have a lot of time. But mm -hmm. it's from a, a listener who titled it, I got to say goodbye to my my grandpa while he was in a coma. And so I'm not probably remembering it completely correct, but um, her grandpa was really sick in a coma and she went to bed one night and had a dream about him like saying goodbye and woke up the next morning and he had passed. Wow. And there's there's another story I've read from a listener where um, 
a family member was struggling with addiction and borrowed money and things like that. And she had a dream where the family member tried to give her the money back or something mm -hmm. like that. And um, she was like, no, you know, don't crazy. worry about it. I remember that actually. And woke up the next morning and mm -hmm. they were, they were gone. Yeah. So I remember that one. I think dreams are such an, cause I do, I don't, I know like, oh, there's science behind dreams and you're in REM and you're in all these cycles and things like that. But I do believe that dreams almost offer us a different like realm sometimes. I think there's a combination. I do it's think so that sometimes dreams, especially because I m remember my dreams like almost every night. So coming from that, yeah. like, yeah, it is crazy. Like, Can you cont control your dreams? I have before, like a few select times, but I really, for for someone who dreams that often, no, like oh, it doesn't really so happen. It's so great when you can. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, the, it's only it's happened a couple thing. of times. But it's, but here, the thing that's really, really weird for me is yeah. that like, sometimes I wake up, actually a lot of times this happens, I wake up and I want to fall back asleep and complete my mission. Because a lot of times my dreams are like mission based. Same. Like it's like end of the world. Like I need to like save someone or save something. Mine and it's so apocalyptic. Yes, yeah, same. And so it's like this when I wake up, I'm like, no, I'm not completed. Like I need to complete this. Yeah. And so it's weird. But for someone who dreams as much as I do or remembers my dreams as much as I do, <clears throat> um, I do think that there's a combination. Like there are times where I'm like, that is just a, a random select amount of things that have happened in my life that have all been put together in one really crazy ass puzzle piece that doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. yeah. And then you, it flows and you don't really understand why. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then there's other times where I'm just like, that was, that was deep. That was like a base, a visitation. Yeah. Like, that was, that was real. That was raw. Yeah. And I'm not, different. I'm not downplaying your dream at all, but can you imagine if you're at a funeral and someone sat up? Probably one of my bigger fears. Like in reality, especially when you go up and you kind of like look and then oh, just- Open like caskets, I don't, just, I can't do. Yeah, I remember when I was really little, I saw my my great aunt and I remember going up to the casket and seeing her and I was like, this looks like a clay person. I was like, I'm so confused. And I was so little that I just like didn't understand yeah. death really. And so I remember thinking like, that's not her. That's not a human. Cause they take so much makeup yeah. on them. Yeah. So yeah. That they don't yeah. look dead. Yeah. Yeah. But I, and I also, I don't want anyone to mess with my dead self. Like oh. just like burn you, me immediately. Like I don't. Do you want to be burned or do you want, I think you should be turned into a coral reef. We've talked about that. Yeah, that's true. You would you would love to give fish an ocean life. Yeah, you're right. But there's something freeing to me about being like sprinkled over some like magical like earth type of yeah. You know, o over a, a mountain that overlooks the ocean. Because unfortunately, you'd probably get turned into coral, and the coral would die not long after. No, just no, 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 no. It's well looked after. Oh, really? It flourishes in the ocean. Mm -hmm. But. You're revitalizing ocean floors. I understand that, but I'm just saying with the, the, company the current that, climate. Of, no, the company that does it, you're you're well looked oh, after. Oh, okay. I thought it was just like in some random spot no, where there's no, a no, coral no, reef no, and it's no. like, well, I no, mean, you're, shit's you're well looked after. Fucked. It's this sounds weird, but it's like I like the idea of that for like the whole concept. But the idea of like putting myself in this contained version of myself where I just feel like I want to be so like spread apart and like free does that <laughs> so, make sense yeah. what's really funny about that is you um I, you've told me this before and shortly after you told me this i got a video on my tiktok page of two daughters that went out to like do the same exact thing with their mm. father's ashes yeah. and like as blew back in their face <laughs> they ended up eating the no, ashes no and i literally was just like Fuck. yeah and also did they like, make a joke about it or like were they they were like uh, they, i mean they posted on tiktok okay that's why that's why i'm laughing because i like i would not yeah. laugh if that was a serious matter but the fact that they posted, they posted it, it i'm assuming they're like you know yeah so the it, dad would probably have like loved that it would probably be a great dad joke but i think like you know you, Truth. you yeah like it's kind of like that reality of like people that want their ashes spread at disneyland and they do it on the Haunted Mansion ride. And so when the Haunted Mansion ride stops. And vacuum it up. It's typically because someone did something like that. And so all oh, they do is vacuum crazy. those ashes up and throw them in a dumpster. But no, I'm wanting it over a body of water. That's a fact. Like yeah. I absolutely need to be in a body of water. So it's like I'm it's I'm gone. Like the minute I hit the water. But it's more of just that moment of like principle of not principle. Yeah. The moment of like freedom. You yeah. Know? And so. Yeah. Well, right. Your body is just simply, and this is coming off of our latest. It's a vessel. Spotify live episode is 
when you really get down to it, your body is just the universe in one way or another, just experiencing itself. You're just pieces of all these elements that were created in stars and it all like coalesces into this body. And at the end, it just goes back to being the same thing. Yeah. Which is why I think it's, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, what? I think it's so beautiful when people choose to one, get cremated and like two, I really like the Jewish faith where you don't be, you're not embalmed. Mm -hmm. Your body goes back to the earth. Like I hate the thought of being embalmed and you have all these chemicals pumped into your body no it's so unnatural yeah it's and i mean so it, was, it was so traditional so it, it made sense like it to me like growing up that was the best option that was the thing that made the most sense that was the most beautiful thing that was the most sacred thing like that's what i was taught gr- growing up and then whenever mm. i got a little bit older i started realizing what i would want for myself and like i don't think that you know my my grandparents they were buried that way and i'm I'm not like they made the wrong decision, you know, no, but whatever you choose to yeah. do with your fucking body, like do it. It's your body. Right. It's your death. But I do agree that like for me personally, like I do like the idea of not being like, I'm telling you, I want to just be free. Oh, I'll like, fucking check the- you. If you die before me, I'll check your shit you everywhere. You as free as like, me. I'll tell you that. What do you mean? Justin's going to get launched into space. <laughs> My body is going to be perfectly preserved. You don't need no embalmment, nothing. I'm going to be like, I'm going to look the same as I did the day I died for a long time. Yeah, he's if getting I'm, launched. If I'm shot at the right trajectory, <laughs> I will outlast the planet Earth because Earth will go into the sun in 5 billion years. I'll still be floating. I'll look just like me. You could literally look at me and be like, oh, yep, that's Justin. There he is. Oh, my God. We got to have a little window on your space yes. casket so you can just see oh him my just God. The rotating only, around. Amazing. I'm, I hope to not go into orbit around anything. I don't want to orbit the moon or something stupid. <laughs> oh, that would be that'd so be cool. dumb. Oh, look, there he comes <laughs> once again. There that'd he is. Cool. No, no, I don't want to orbit shit. Some asteroid hits him, takes him <laughs> out. Oh, fuck. I'm down with that possibility. It's all right. Yeah. I just want to be shot at a trajectory where I have a, a solid chance to leave the galaxy. But my <laughs> only fear, my only fear in Morgan's doing like, so. I know this already. <laughs> my only fear in doing so is that I could encounter some super psycho advanced life form. They're definitely going to resurrect that for you. for some reason can bring me back. And then they yep. like test me like I'm on some like experiment. Yep. Oh, look at this oh being God. we found. And then I'm perpetually kept alive, but experimented on. Yeah, that I is can a see fear. It. I can but, see it. <laughs> Talk about I see it. listen. Talk about being <laughs> more free than being shot out and oh floating God. in nothingness for billions of years. You're yes. dead. You're not even going to feel the freeness. He's like, excuse Who, you. What are any of us? Who? Okay, Lauren's uh, not going to feel the freeness more than me. Uh, except I'm going to be way the fuck out there somewhere. Well, okay. This is what. Can uh, you imagine being dead and then just watching your body get launched and you're like, wait, wait, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, what? This, yeah, like say your spirit was still here. <laughs> yeah. And then it means and that you can't stick around Earth with all the other spirits <laughs> and you're just like perpetually on this journey yeah, alone forever. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. God, can you imagine? No, it's just I'm I'm loving this because Morgan's just here being like the most supportive girlfriend. Like, I support your dreams of your death. <laughs> oh, fucking just, I, yeah, like, like, what? I get to hit the button. Well, Launch. Why is this is so great? You because think you're gonna live me? Yeah. I got good genes behind me. My grandma, my great grandma's still alive. My great grandma lived until she was pretty old. Men die before the same age, fam. Men die before women. So I like how (laughs) I just realized that all of our like our death wishes are so like us. Like with gossip. Do you know mine? Yes, of course. You want to be a diamond? No. Oh, what? It Since depends when. It depends on what my children would like. Okay, I thought you wanted to be a diamond like for your yeah, like, yeah, children's yeah. ring. No, you could you could definitely pass me out like candy. I've said that at a previous episode. Mm-hmm. So candy. Like yeah, party, I'm just confused by party that. Party favors, party favors. Each each kid can have a diamond. Well, okay. I'll I'll That's I'll, such a small amount though. It's like I'm going to make big rocks. I'm not doing it shitty. I understand, mm-hmm. but I like, will I will estate plan to a lot. Mm-hmm my children the proper size diamond of me I know. or if they don't want the rocks then i want a jewish funeral and i want to be in the ground three days all right hmm. either or you know okay so what do you want more you know just i don't really care i'm gonna be gone it doesn't matter hmm. so it's what my family wants okay fair <sighs> enough i don't want to leave you alone in the ground though so you want her to be a diamond 
Well, I could become a partial diamond and then you can launch the rest of me in your coffin. <laughs> Just fucking send it. Send it to the moon. <laughs> there you go. There you All go. Right. Okay, All we got right. a couple more. We got to move this train along here. I think this was enjoyable. I hope other people enjoy it because pff, we're a little off our rockers. We are, but honestly, that's what this episode is. It truly is. Yeah. And also people are always like, I love when it's a long episode, which always makes me freaking laugh because in the first episode we, we, we recorded, do you remember? It was like 23 minutes. I was like, Morgan, we got to keep it short because people are going to be really bored if it's too long. And Morgan was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now people are like two hours. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and Morgan's um, like, yay. <laughs> I have to edit for five days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's okay. But I love you all. And <sighs> Lauren's editing a little more these days. She's four episodes of editing so far. So, you know, it's not just me. <laughs> I'm 80 to four. Justin did one, actually. He did Lyle and a couple partials. So people will probably tune in to the launch of my body, literally. Or it'll be we so can, common at that point of it'll things be being THT launched. THT on Supervised just, channel. <laughs> yeah, it'll be the last. It'll be the very last THT on Supervised. Our kids will run it. Yeah. <laughs> There he goes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the THT rocket on, blows up on the <laughs> launch pad. THT juniors. <laughs> the kids. Yeah. Up next. A couple of years ago, I was home alone one night, taking off my makeup at my vanity. I remember I was listening to a YouTube video when I started hearing a man's deep voice faintly in the background. I kept hearing it, but thought it could just be the video, but it kept getting louder. I paused the video and didn't hear it. And when I played the video, it kept going. So I paused it again and the noise continued. My room is on the second floor and faces the front of my house. So sometimes if a neighbor is outside talking, I can hear it. But I checked and it wasn't coming from outside. I realized while looking around that the sound was coming directly from my vent. My room is above the garage. So I started panicking because it sounded like the person was having a conversation over the phone. So I thought, if this is a person, I'm scared. But fuck that. What if someone broke in and they're planning something over the phone? I watched a lot of true crime at the time, which didn't help. Anyways, this all happened in a matter of minutes. I didn't call the cops right away because when I was younger, I thought someone broke in and called 911. The cops took over two hours to get to my house, and thankfully, no one had gotten in, but... It left me feeling like they wouldn't get there fast enough if I ever needed it. Because of that, and because of how close this voice sounded, my first instinct was to call my boyfriend at the time. He had been at my house not too long before the noises started. He recently left, so I thought he could just turn back. When I called him, I was so terrified, because at this point, the voice was so loud and clear, yet weirdly the words sounded muffled, where I couldn't make out what it was saying. Can you fill me up a little bit more? Damn. On FaceTime, my boyfriend answered, and I just stayed quiet and signaled him to be quiet, too. He was confused, and then proceeded to ask who that was in the background. Mind you, this was a FaceTime call. Even if it had been someone outside, there was no way he would have heard that through a call. So the moment he said that, I knew I wasn't going crazy, but it made me even more scared. And so was he. Yeah. He was worried. He started calling the cops for me. And as he was going to, I hear my mom's car arrive in the driveway. I was worried someone had actually broken in at that point. And feeling frantic and scared, I just thought I'm going to get to my mom before anyone else does. So I heard when her keys were in the door and I ran over to it. You could still hear it. But as soon as that door opened, it went quiet. The first thing I asked my mom while she was still in the door was if anyone was outside talking. Nobody. When I saw my boyfriend next time we talked about it and he said the voice sounded so loud that he thought someone was in my room with me when I first called him. This was one of the scariest things that has happened here. But when we moved in, I was in sixth grade at the time, we found a jar with weird things in it buried, kind of hidden in our backyard. My mom got scared and threw it out. Then, sometime after this incident, my boyfriend had moved in and he found another jar in a really weird spot. It was on the roof drainage tubing. Sorry, I don't know the technical word for this. Haha. <laughs> he found it when he was getting a helicopter toy down for a kid. 
were Mexican, and my family jumped to the conclusion that it was a brujeria. Brujeria? Don't ask me. See, my Spanish ain't that good, Lauren. Or witchcraft, probably from the last homeowner. Years later, I'm not with that guy anymore. My mom moved out and rented this house out to me and my best friend. Things have been okay, but we do hear random noises from time to time. The jars and voice were definitely the scariest moments, but we're all pretty spiritual in the house, so we try to focus on positive energy and the good memories we've made here. The end? The end. Yeah. Oh, man. It's just giving me so many ideas. What do you think? Justin just wants to use this to fuck with someone. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just like, to leave stuff around the house as you renovate. Like, <laughs> right. I have, uh, I just can't. I can't. I can't. Cannot bring energy like that into my life because I believe. I believe like voodoo dolls have power, and like, there's this old movie with. It was one of Kate Hudson's first movies, I believe, and it's called The Skeleton Key, and it kind of has the same plot of Get Out, mm. which is really interesting because I've never put this together until mm -hmm. now, but this older couple hires this woman to be a caregiver and shit goes wrong. And I don't want to spoil the plot for anyone who get out hasn't nuts. seen this movie, but skeleton key is the original get out and it is fucking terrifying. Jesus. And so I just can't have that in my life. I can't have that. I hear this stuff with mm -hmm. jars full of shit and I'm like, what, are, what do we got? You want to, what yeah. do we got? What, what's in there? You want to know what movie I'll tell you to never watch? Because I, when I was in Orange County with my friends, we like after the bars too. So we're drinking and everything. We're like, let's put a movie on. Ha ha. And then we're like, oh, we'll put a little spooky movie on because, you know, it's Halloween season. We put on this movie called Old People on Netflix. Within the first five minutes, I was like literally gagging. It's called Old People? It's called Old People. Or old? Old People. Oh. Well, I could be wrong. I was, I was after the bar. So there was could be. Was it the beach one or no? We were five minutes in and I said, absolutely uh, not. Yeah, Lauren, though, like you are, I will say, mm -hmm. you are you are one of the most easily scared people. Like we had a true crime episode on in a car once driving back from a road trip and a lot of us gals listen to true crime. Mm -hmm. And Lauren is sitting there in the back seat. Shut it off. Shut it off. I'm going to throw up. Shut it off. Shut I, it off. I was, I was like, I, if you continue to play... That's fine, but I will ask you to pull over and let me so out. I, and let me out, <laughs> and I will hitchhike. I think honestly, or, I or think get if, an Uber. I think if we kept playing it, she would have just opened the door and rolled. So <laughs> I, I did just read a, a murder mystery book though, and I loved it. Okay, perfect. And I so, also watched a murder mystery movie, and I also loved it. So like, I'm true crime next step. Perfect. Here we go. I still don't think true crime, but sorry. Here's what we're gonna do for the fans. Okay. And because of the fans, you're not gonna be able to say no. So. My idea is we all get together one night, movie night, and we watch the movie old. No. And we have a camera that's facing us because obviously we can't, you know, display the movie because copyright. I, don't, I won't watch that. And we just, we get, well, we'll you know, you won't, it won't be the whole movie. We'll just cut to some of the best reactions you guys have, <laughs> but we'll just, it turns into great content for our people. And that's why we're here. So that's a... Sorry, go on. Oh, so you're down. No, I'm saying that's a funny idea, but I also like, even though that, that one TikTok that you made of me, Morgan, where it was my reactions, I absolutely thought it was hilarious. I loved it. It was great. But like, I'm, I'm, not, like, my, I'm not watching that movie. I'm like my reactions sometimes, I'm like, why are you so dramatic? <laughs> Stop. People love the drama. Yeah. I got to say, you're good. if I were on the phone with you, and for whatever reason, like yeah, Jerry to wasn't going to be home and I heard that shit. The most shocking part of this story to me is the fact that the boyfriend did not just zip the fuck yeah. back there. And it's like, yeah, the mom showed up. But even if I knew your dad was about to come home or your mom was about to show up, I would have my ass back there. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe it's a long did. distance relationship. No, you know? no, no. He had just left her he house. He just oh. left. <laughs> That's and but, she yeah, had called because she's like, maybe he could turn around. Yeah. But maybe he did come back after the mom, but the mom got there first. Okay. Well, still, I would just, I'd be back. I think it's crazy that the volume was so loud that mm -hmm. he thought someone was in yeah. the room with her. Yeah. Which is significant because. Because yeah. iPhones mute a lot of background noise. They have that technology to mute stuff like that. I would just be like, what the, I, I wouldn't even know what's going on, but I know my ass would get back there. Yeah. Well, thank God. Cause I'm scared of the dark. So I need that energy. 
Well, and if I knew you were going to be alone, I probably wouldn't leave. But if that ever had happened and this was like our story, whoo, I'd be back. I know. And then, of course, when I'd show up, there'd be no more voices and I'd have no fun with it. So <laughs> I know. <Got> it. <laughs> I wonder, like, I would I would love, like, on um, we had group therapy today and an amazing listener uh, who is on group therapy regularly. I think this is her second month, actually. But she said she's going to send me crystals for, like, protection and stuff. And I just wonder if, like, you do live in a place like this, whether it's a house. Um, I know you can sage. However, you should always make sure you buy your sage from a Native American or indigenous person because a lot of sage is actually, like, harvested inappropriately and overexploited now. So there's a lot. So make sure you're buying, like, ethical sage. But I just wonder what other tactics like you can do to protect yourself in moments like this or other cleansing methods. Like I want to know everything that's out there. Yes. So a little bit ago when I said I have two questions, that was my second one. We only got through my first question, but I knew that it would come back around and I'd be able to ask the second <laughs> one. So the second one is that what do you got like what is the appropriate response how do you defend yourself do you like that girl in the video you showed do you scream and like run at them do you like match their energy essentially <laughs> yeah do you say some type of words do you leave the area like what is your best defense against an interaction like this or is so, there really no defense well i think it depends i think i think <laughs> like it really actually though no like, i know oh i thought you were trying is, to say a skeptic thing no i'm like, saying it, like, it does it's I'm not saying, real <laughs> no 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 i'm saying if there is that supernatural happening mm -hmm. do you even have any real control I think maybe, but I I don't know because there has to be. There has to be because, right, like people in a lot of these stories, people say they start to pray and the spirit vanishes or something like that. So I really do think it's kind of person dependent where it, what you believe in. And I, but I have to think too, because if, if we're onto something, like if they do really do visit us when we're at our most vulnerable state, children, sleeping, whatever, um, then if we are just literally like, fuck you, do you know what I mean? Like, are they going to, you know, if we're like hardcore, we put up this shell, we put up this wall, like we're like, Ugh, like then like, do they dissipate? Be gone, bitch. Because if, if that's, if the vulnerability yeah. thing is an aspect, then like. I could see it. I could see it being so freaked out when you match their energy yeah. versus cowering that I could see that. I could see that working. <laughs> or there's me where I'm like, tell me everything. <laughs> I know. And they're like, wait, what? No. And then they disappear. <laughs> you <laughs> scare me. You'd, you'd be one to like open the door with the Ouija board or something. Cause I'm you like, want, I'm like, you want to know more. And, and then, it's like, bring me in. A ghost oh, hovers God. over Justin at night. He wakes up and is like, what's your middle name? What's up? What's up, bro? <laughs> what's your favorite color? What's your sign? Yeah. What's your big three? <laughs> what's Pisces? the other side like? What's your five year plan? <laughs> and they're like, this is boring. Bye. <laughs> I hope that's, that's the all defense. that happens. It's Just kind ask, of like the ask Monsters them what Inc. Five year plan is. <laughs> it's literally Monsters Inc. where they couldn't like write the whole thing was about scaring, and yeah. if they can't scare, it's just worthless. To yes, them. yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You two just collaborated on Whoa. that. That was great. Whoa. That was great to see. Oh, it's fine. You know, it, it's totally fine. It's brutal to watch when you see it and the other person doesn't, because that's how you feel when you go to high five me and I'm not. Looking. What happened? It's okay. Lauren tried to high five you and you just ghosted her. She probably went ghosted like this. <laughs> no, it was a whole I looked away. And we'll roll looked... the tapes. We'll slow mo it on YouTube. It was a it was brutal. <laughs> it was brutal out that here. That was better than most of your high fives I see on the podcast, by yeah, the way. Yeah, a lot of the high fives we do on the podcast, uh Instagram thinks are Hail Hitler signs. Oh. Dead ass. They removed it for hate speech. I got one more and then a wholesome ending. The ghost of a woman who killed her baby lived in my house. Well, this is actually my mom's experience, but I remember the situation as I was about six or seven at the time. This all takes place in my old house in Queens, New York. It was a two bedroom, one bath, and the way the layout was, you could clearly see both bedroom doors from the kitchen. Anyways, one night, I remember being woken up by my mother telling my sister and I, me and my sister shared a room, that she wants us to sleep in her room with her. It was probably around 2 or 3 a.m., and we were confused, and we still went in her room. I asked her why once we were in her room, but all she said was that there was a knocking on our front door, 
and she wanted us to be in her room for safety. Apparently, my mother went to the kitchen for some water, and she looked over at our bedroom door, we sleep with the door open, and saw a woman with a stroller turn the corner and go into our room. The baby, however, had a knife in its back. My mom thought it was a woman who just came into our house until she saw her walk straight past our bed and through the window. We lived on a second floor, so obviously there would be a fall if this was a real human, and she literally passed through the wall and disappeared. Another experience was when my mom kept having paranormal experiences, and she got so scared one night she called my aunt, who was a devout Catholic, and had her on speaker, and they started praying together out loud. The room temperature went from hot to cold, the lights went absolutely crazy, and the kitchen cabinets were opening and closing. Kind of like a scene from Out of the Conjuring or something. Hmm. My sis- Classic. My sister did research on our house, and that's when we found an article about a woman who killed her baby in our house before we moved in. When I heard about this, it really scared me because my mom, along with all of my family, are very religious, and they do not believe in anything paranormal. So for my mom to go through this was insane. Dude, that's the other thing. I always feel like in movies, it's like the very religious family is the one who gets like... Like picked, attacked. Yeah, picked. This led to my mom getting our new house blessed when we moved to Georgia. I just hope that woman and baby spirit find peace. Because that, like literally the mom saw the woman with a baby stroller and a baby and a knife in the baby's back. Right. Which that, like fucked up. that just makes me think like in the old house I used to live in in North Hollywood where the kid killed their two parents like with a hammer or something. And you didn't have any experiences. It's if what this is the house that you're in his old the house. The one before. Do you not know this? And, no. And just by Justin lived in a double homicide house. Yeah. Like if you typed in the address, you scroll down a couple of Google pages, all the news articles. Yeah. Were there. A 23-year-old kid murdered no, his parents. No, yeah, and one no. body was in a truck down the street. One was rolled up in a sheet, like, in the room still. And just by reading the articles— Did you know that moving in there? No, our no. neighbor told us about a month and a half before we were actually moving out. So we'd been there for two years. No and way. Yeah. The thing that's crazy— No bad vibes there, though. Zero. Okay. Wrote a bunch of great music. We had—obviously, we had a revolving door with all the people we worked yeah. with. Yeah. I mean, all these, you know, music people and like creative people are very tied into energies and vibes and things. And you want to know the, I'm sorry, I'll let you finish then I'll. I'm just saying with this story, it makes me think of what if one night I had like got up and gone to the bathroom and like down the hallway, you just saw this kid like carrying this hammer, right? Then, then I'd be like, oh fuck. Like, yeah, I've. I've fucking, I've gone through this too, but yeah. there was absolutely nothing. If no. we had never been told. You would have never known from the never energy in that house. Zero. No. Just absolutely wow. zero from all the negative even after, shit. Even after we knew you couldn't feel that energy there. No, we still like yeah. slept fine. It Which just, the craziest part is the new house you moved into. Do you remember how bad it was when we, when you first moved in there? What? You had bad dreams and stuff? I. Oh, you did. Yeah. And Jake. One of Justin's roommates had terrible dreams when they moved into this new house. Like nothing ever happened there. We know all the owners. Nothing happened there as far as we can research. Like we we deep like deep dived, and I saged the place. Like I went to (laughs) uh, an indigenous shop. I bought sage. I saged the place, and still, I have never had as bad of dreams as I've had at that home. Like I was scared to sleep there. I did not like it. And so I actually saged it again. And after I saged for a second time, stopped. You know what's weird? Mm. I've, I haven't i have really had bad dreams there. My worst dreams that I've had in recent memory are all at your place. And it's all with the dream catcher right next to my head. On Maybe the, the dream catcher catches spirits instead. It was a dream catcher we actually got in South Dakota during our road trip. Our original no one. No way. Wait, no. you guys are me. Me and you. Oh. We bought it. We bought <laughs> wow. it from a, a Native American store in South Dakota. Literally God. right next to my head. The fucking memories. We need to look at pictures and just like remember that that period of our life because that was special. It was. It was. I'll Twerking join. my I'd ass like in an it. elevator. Yes. 
I that's bingo when I, dots all over my face. I know. I took a bingo dauber and just put them all over Lauren's face when Why? I we were, we were so drunk. Why? Can we go back to these these like vibes? Yeah. Can we like yeah re, yeah. Like, Let's go. We should find a bingo club in LA. I'd love to play again. Can we be like young again? Yeah. Yeah. But three amigos. I just I can't cheers. I need, yeah. We, we're empty. Doesn't help. I just think that I feel like would have been my time to experience. Would it have not? I don't know. We it's, know it's uh, hard to know with spirits, but we're gonna yeah. end on a positive note here. Okay. Or what I, I just don't want it to drip on me. Or what I Fair consider enough. out of all these stories positive. Okay, yeah. I mean, I was just trying to somewhat categorize it yeah. and relate, but I just I I feel like I was in the environment for that. You were. You you definitely were. And I just I think it I don't know, because I mean, here we are in the third most haunted hotel in California, our third most haunted place, maybe number one hotel. And we haven't had anything besides like the brief shadow I saw cross the wall, but. <laughs> and yet an employee who brought the wine literally hasn't had experience in two years. Yeah. She lives on, she, not lives. She said that she hangs out on the first floor. The weird shit happens on the fourth floor. Which we are. Yeah. And she So says, we're going to go outside. We're going to adventure. We're going to open ourselves up. We're going to, we're going to see. Come but, but I'm absolutely no, closed. No, no, no. But Lauren did call the person um, downstairs when she ordered the wine. And that person said that they have had coworkers with many experiences. And yeah. even the girl that the yeah, she said she has experiences yeah. too. It all happens on the fourth floor, which we are on the fourth floor. Yeah, we're gonna go hang out. Fucking sure. Crazy. And so in saying, okay, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna go explore. We are thus inviting yep. these experiences. Oh, what the fuck Bring are we doing? Bring it on. This is why we're here. We're doing but it for you guys. Let's do thing. it. Let's here's see people walking I don't, around. I want to no, see but knives. I, no, I feel crazy now like saying that out loud, but I really did. It's hard. It's hard to know as you're reading. And I'm like, did my eyes get tired? What happened? But I literally did see a little dark shadow move across that wood beam. So what I want to say, though, you guys, is that I don't know if... They okay, so we're speaking about if they visit when you're vulnerable, they're not going to visit like these detectives. Like a lot of times, it's people that are just like they're believers, but they're not looking for it because like we're, if we're, we're, we're trying we're to looking hard. for it, yeah, they're not going to come to us because then they might be taking pictures of so videos. Why, of. So why are you like, guys so scared of a Ouija board? Because then you're asking you're for asking it, you're for inviting it, it. Oh. right? But so are we in the sense of we're going to go walk around. We are being detectives. So why would you be afraid of a Ouija board if it happens when you're not? I feel like Ouija boards are inherently dark. Did you hear that scream? I didn't hear a scream. I heard banging. I just heard a a shriek. shriek. You guys didn't hear banging? I heard a shriek. See now we're asking for it. I have to pee so bad. Did you guys not? You didn't hear the banging. I heard a shriek. You didn't hear any of the banging. No, No, you're going crazy. No, I believe you. But I have to pee and then we're going to end on a wholesome note to hopefully cover up all this emotional damage. So, no, the thing is, is that I don't it's I wasn't scared about it because it sounded like it was something coming from like the room next to us where they're like stomping no, really loud. just like a squeak. It's our show now, Lauren. Let's go. <laughs> Can you imagine? How do we handle this? OK. What? Go for it. OK. How do, we don't know how to interact without Morgan. That's not true. I know. It's so, trying to be funny. I think, yes, I heard the high squeal thing, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. literally it just was like a sound in the background, just the same as that car passing. Yeah. But I didn't hear the stomping. I don't know what that's about. You guys, about. I can't believe you didn't hear the banging. Maybe we'll see Chucky. That would be really a, not ideal. There was the little two, guy with the knife. You know, actually, you know, was, <laughs> <laughs> there was two people in my childhood that were really terrifying, and they're both movies that I was not supposed to watch that I did watch. It was It. And Chucky. The original It. Before the remake. Yes. yes. I Did never you see watched the remake? The, yes. No. No. Oh, no. it's so good. Oh, my God. I was terrified my entire life. Not life. But, like, for most <laughs> of my childhood, like, I, like, would drive. Like, I would drive my bike. <laughs> I would ride my bike or, like, go past sewers. And I was, like, I'm. It was. From the original. From the original. You got to see the new one. I was a kid when I saw it. It was awful. And then. Yeah, Chucky too. Me and my brother hid underneath our kitchen table. My sister had friends over and was watching Chucky. And he was like, shh, Lauren, don't say anything. We got to watch a scary movie. My brother used to tell me to do all these things and when we were little. And 
He was a bad influence. I used to bring a little portable speaker around with me. And when I'd be with like Jake or my friends in a hotel or somewhere we were traveling, I'd put it under the bed in the middle of the night. I'd take my phone out and start playing like creepy, like little kids singing songs or things like the theme songs to horror films, that so kind of thing. That's and literally it, what it, my dad just told I, me he wanted to do. And we'd to wake head. up in the middle of the night and it'd be like this creepy song playing and I would just be trying to hold back the laughter. I had and no idea. And you'd hear idea. someone like sit up. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I had no idea that you were insane. Yeah. yeah he's pretty, it's, pretty it's bad. Fun. Let's end this on a wholesome note. I don't want this to ever end. This has been the best night ever. Last but not least... I'm an ICU nurse. We often have patients who are palliative and nearing end of life. This one night shift, I had a patient who was very near death, hours away. We had called the family in and they were on their way. As we were waiting for them, I went and sat in the room with the patient to get caught up on charting. I didn't want her to be alone while she was dying. While I was sitting there, I suddenly had a feeling of pressure and coldness on my left shoulder. I immediately thought to myself, this is odd, but I shrugged it off and I went and I grabbed my sweater. When I came back into the room, I could smell cigar smoke. I thought, this is getting strange. There was no one other than the patient and myself in the room. I called for another nurse to come into the room. I asked her if she could smell the cigar smoke. She said she could and left. I was kind of weirded out now. Again, I was alone in the room with the patient, still smelling cigar smoke, when again, I felt pressure on my left shoulder and instantly felt cold. The smell of cigar smoke was becoming much more prominent. When the family finally showed up, I asked them if anyone in the family smoked cigars. They told me their dad, the patient's husband, was a cigar smoker. When I told them about the smell and the cold shoulder, they said that their dad, who had passed, would often stand with one hand on their shoulder smoking his cigar to offer them comfort in tough times. I totally believe the patient's husband had come to welcome her to the other side. Why am I crying? Oh, I thought I was going to do so well. <sighs> when your eyes well up, so do mine. I know. Wow. That's so beautiful. That's insane. Love. Like, just that love that, like, he would be waiting for her. As she's like getting ready to cross. The fact that it was not even a family member. Like no. someone that is why the nurse, like just a random nurse who would have no idea that their dad used to do that. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my left shoulder. Like, cause you know when someone rests a hand on you. Mm -hmm. And then to feel that coldness. And then like the cigar. I don't like that smoke. It's cold. I wish it was warmth. Wouldn't you think? But yeah. still, I see that's what I'm hopeful for. It's so like he beautiful. can carry cigars into the after. Like, damn. Well, you could do some like <laughs> I mean, that's just dope. Like it just seems so happy and peaceful. Like you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And then you have the power to come welcome others. That's what I'm hopeful for. I mean, shit. Amazing. So amazing. Yeah, that's wow. better than the like dark figure with the no eyes and whatever. I know. Well, you kind of like wonder too, because we've came up with so many theories this episode and it's just like, was that energy? Was that a person who couldn't cross over because he had unresolved things and he needed to figure them out before he, like, right? he crosses over? Like, is it, is it her illusion? Like, it's like all these things where it's just this crazy concept of like, what it, it's, we won't know. We don't know. We don't I know. I see uh, my battery symbol on my camera is oh. on. And so that means as beautiful as that was, as yeah. spooky as this might have been, it's time to end it. I got to get my ass up out of this chair before I lose it all. We talked enough for sure. This was like a, <laughs> this was a great episode. Like a three hour episode. Yeah. It was like really fun. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you, everyone who shared their stories. I'll figure out a good way to put the Google Docs up. Our live show that's happening in LA on December 2nd and on Moment House live stream, two separate shows on December 4th. Tickets are going to be on sale probably by the time this episode drops. So check the episode description for those. Otherwise, thank you. Like, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you for making this show a thing. And yeah. 
And t- <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. Yeah. What What do you got there? I'm, no, I'm watching it flicker. I was just going to say, this is one of the episodes that we have been the most like, I feel like talk about ourselves. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, then it's like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. And be sure to share your stories or what yeah. you think on, you know, the paranormal, spirituality, all of that in the description, because I would love, I would absolutely love to hear from people of other cultures and what your takes are on spirituality and the afterlife. Yeah. So be sure to share. If you don't want your name tied to it, it's super easy to make an anonymous YouTube account. I know from the troll comments, so. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> but on that note, love you all. And until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.